Michaels and Dan Deardorff. Delighted you're with us as we continue our ABC coverage of the NFL preseason. Next Monday night, we'll be in Denver for the Broncos and the San Francisco 49ers. The Broncos are going to try once again in a rematch of Super Bowl 24. And then on uh, August the 27th, we'll be in Indianapolis for the Eagles and the Colts as we look forward to our season opener September the 10th, the San Francisco 49ers and the New Orleans Saints. Well, both these teams figured to be legitimate contenders for the throne in the NFL in 1990, the Bills and the Giants. The Bills last year, 9-7, and seven, and they went to the playoffs against Cleveland where they barely lost that game 34-30. to 30. Only a drop pass with 14 seconds remaining kept them from going on to the AFC Championship. The Giants, 12-4 and four last year, in what they call a rebuilding season. They rebuilt it pretty well because they got into the playoffs only to lose in overtime to the Los Angeles Rams. But Al Michaels, I think both these teams would feel a lot more comfortable if they didn't have all the holdouts and they didn't have the unsigned players, which literally is plaguing the league uh, very and dramatically higher this year. In particular, the Giants, and certainly as far as their defense is concerned, as you know, Frank, the Giants are still minus four key defensive people, including Lawrence Taylor and Leonard Marshall. You would suspect they'll eventually be there, and hallmark of a Bill Parcells team in New York through his years with the Giants has been a good defense. Last year, only Denver gave up fewer points. Another hallmark of a Parcells coach team has been ball control and a good running game behind a nicely developing offensive line. But one of the more intriguing questions for the Giants during this preseason and something we'll keep an eye on tonight is who will run the football. Eventually, you know it's going to be Rodney Hampton. Out of Georgia, he was their number one draft choice. But what about for the present? Can they squeeze another season out of O.J. Anderson, who last year surprised everyone by gaining over 1,000 yards? Or can they squeeze another year out of Joe Morris, who's approaching 30 and coming back off a foot injury that rendered him inoperative for all of 1989? One of those two guys figures to go, and it appears at the moment that Morris is the man on the bubble. Let's talk about the Buffalo Bills, Dan Deardorff, and their chances in 1990. A team coming back from a division title in 88, another one in 89. What are their prospects in your mind in 1990? Al, you really touched on the front end of the old classic good news, bad news situation here in Buffalo. And you hit the good news, a two-time division championship team here in the AFC East. The bad news is, is that a lot of people, and a lot of Buffalo people especially, tag them as Super Bowl material, and they are not there yet. Uh, a lot of things went wrong in 1989. Of course, Jim Kelly out for a while. Also, this team started taking shots at one another outside the locker room for the media and all the fans to hear. Thus, they earned the nickname, the Bickering Bills. Marv Levy says, those days are gone. We won't see any of that in 1990. Talking to the head coach yesterday, two things must happen, Marv Levy says, for the Bills to get to the Super Bowl. One, they must increase their pass rush, get more sacks. Two faces are gone. Art Still and Fred Smurlis have moved on, replaced by new, quicker people. And also, they must stop giving the football away. The Bills last year, the only team to make the playoffs with a minus in the giveaway-takeaway ratio department. So we'll find out tonight if the Bills are going to make any progress towards finally reaching that Super Bowl goal. And the Bills and the Giants open up each team's preseason schedule. Marv Levy is 62 years old. Last year, he was the second oldest coach in the league, second only to Jerry Burns, and now he's down to third because New England went out and hired Rod Rust, who is one day older than Marv Levy. He took over in mid-86, and Bill Parcells enters his eighth season with the New York Giants. He won a Super Bowl in 1986. Then the Giants fell apart in the strike year 87. Didn't make the playoffs barely in 88. And a lot of people think he did his best ever coaching job last season because the Giants were expected to be about a 9-7 and seven or at best a 10-6 and six club under Phil Sims and instead wound up with a mark of 12-4. and four. And then, as Frank mentioned, they lost in overtime to the Los Angeles Rams in the divisional playoffs. Jim Kelly, who until the other day was the highest paid player in the NFL, his six-year contract this year at roughly $3 million per kicking in, but that has been superseded and surpassed by Joe Montana, who signed for four years at roughly $13 million. The Giants to kick off, Matt Stover trying to win the job from Raul Allegre, Boots it five yards into the end zone, and after hesitating, Eddie Fuller, another man trying to win a job for the Bills, brings it out to the 10-yard line. So from there, will Buffalo set up? We will see Jim Kelly for probably two series tonight. 
And then we'll see Frank White and eventually Gail Gilbert. The numbers for Kelly last season. Remember, he had a separated shoulder in midseason. White came on to win three straight. And then Kelly finished up. With Thurman Thomas not in camp, it's Davis and Kennebrew, the running backs, Reed and Lofton are the wideouts, and McKellar is the developing tight end. A lot of trouble up front where Will Wolford has yet to sign. Ken Hull is the Pro Bowl center. Only Hull and Ballard are true starters, the center and the right tackle. On first down, Larry Kennebrew picks up about three as he takes it to the 13-yard line. The Giants defensively, now they're missing Leonard Marshall, and they're also missing Eric Howard. The only true starter in there is Dorsey. They are also missing Lawrence Taylor amongst the linebackers, so it's Banks, Diasi, Pepper Johnson, and Johnny Cook, where Taylor would normally be. And with Mark Collins still not in camp, Renee Thompson takes over as the starting left corner with Williams, White, and Myron Guyton. Second and six from the 14-yard line. That's the tight end, McKellar in motion. And on a sweep, this is Davis taking it out past the 20 to the 21-yard line for a Buffalo first down. Stopped there by Carl Banks and Pepper Johnson. Davis would be a backup if he makes the team. Again, we'll remind you that Thurman Thomas uh, is not in camp. And Tom, all Thomas did last year was lead the Bills in rushing and have a sensational year receiving as well. And I wonder how much passing we're going to see by the Bills tonight. You talked about their offensive line woes, Al. And with a rookie at left tackle, I don't look for this guy to spend a lot of time back in the pocket. This is Davis again and knifing through to make the tackle. It would figure the veteran Carl Banks having no trouble with the right side of the Buffalo line and slicing in there to throw Davis for a three-yard loss back to the 18. All right, so there's a big job open for the Bills, and that's the third down specialist as Ronnie Harmon was not protected this offseason, and he moved on. So Don Smith, another free agent out of, unprotected free agent out of Tampa Bay, and Ken Davis will be vying for that spot. Second down and 13. Opening moment to the first quarter with McKellar in motion. And they stay on the ground, second and long, and no room at all for Davis, and this time he runs right into Johnny Cooks who must have looked like Lawrence Taylor to Davis on that play as Cooks goes unblocked and makes the stop. Cooks has moved outside tonight where the Giants, when they picked him up in Indianapolis a couple of years ago, they moved him inside. He actually was a first-round draft pick for the Colts and played that outside spot for a long time, so he's not unfamiliar out there. One thing, though, Frank, here's the situation Marv Levy didn't want to see, especially early in this game, and that's a long yardage situation. And Jim Kelly, I'd, I'd be very shocked if he goes back and sits there and tries to throw this ball a long way downfield. Four receivers out of the shotgun on third and 13 from the 18-yard line. Well, and there's, there's the problem right off the bat. And an over-anxious rookie on the left side in Glenn Parker. Ball side, offense, Again, you talk about all the problems that offensive oh. line. Now, Parker, you know, he's been started out as a collegiate tackle. He's been moved to right guard, left guard. Now he's a left tackle. That's, that's got to be difficult. Oh, I mean, he's in the worst situation a, a rookie offensive lineman to be. Plus, he's having to start at left tackle, arguably the most difficult position on the entire offensive line to play. Maybe Kelly ought to quick kick out. Third and 18 from the 13-yard line. They keep it on the ground on the inside. Give Davis finds room, takes it out to the 29-yard line, but he is still about two yards shy of the first down. He picks <laughs> up 16. I wonder how many Giants from that defense was saying, "Watch the draw, watch the draw." I, I don't. You got to wonder how they could have been fooled by that. There was no doubt. I think that the Buffalo Bills were going to run the football. It had to be a high percentage call, as you can see, it popped open. For Davis, who came within two yards of picking up the first down. Rick Tootin trying to win the punting job. John Kidd left as a plan B free agent. He was Buffalo's kicker last year at the 34-yard line. This is Dave Meggett. After a sensational rookie year, last year averaged over 12 yards to run back on punt returns. Brings it back to the 38. The Giants have it with Bill Sims when we come back. Mm. 
looks like Jim Kelly, Phil Sims figures to be in for just a couple of series tonight. And then we'll take a look at Jeff Hostetler and a couple of all other young quarterbacks for the Giants. But Sims is sure of a starting job. Not so for Joe Morris. He and Rusan are both on the bubble. Robinson and Turner are the wideouts and crosses the tight end. Bavaro is not here. And there's the offensive line. Bart Oates, the only holdover from the Super Bowl line of 86. But it's been nicely rebuilt. This is Morris picking up about three as he takes it to the 41. And that's Joe's first carry since the last preseason game last year when he broke his foot against Pittsburgh and they put him on IR for the entire season. Much to his displeasure, he thought he'd be ready to play by October. With Arch Still and Fred Smurlis gone, it seals and right, starting with Lodish, and Bruce Smith is also not playing tonight as he rests his injured knee. Bennett, Bailey, Bentley, and Pally are the linebackers. And there's the secondary on second and seven. This is Rusan plunging forward for about three to the 45, and it will be third down and three. Darrell Pally in on the tackle along with Carlson Bailey. The Giants actually will look at a bunch of running backs tonight. The number one draft pick, of course, Rodney Hampton, we talked about. Aaron Emanuel, a seventh round pick out of USC, will probably see some action tonight. Lewis Tillman had a big preseason game a year ago up here. He figures to be around when they get down to their 47, but they'll look at a lot of them tonight. Third down and two. Sims out of the shotgun with four receivers in this set. And Meggett also in the game. Meggett out into the pattern, but Sims is going to run, and Sims runs for a first down into Buffalo territory. Tackled at the 46-yard line. Chris Hale comes up from the secondary. That is not Phil Sims' long <laughs> suit. He is not Nuriev, I can assure you. And, and, and talk about not being able to stop the competitive juices from flowing, Frank. What is he doing him. running the ball in a preseason uh, game? He's a guy that's been sacked well, uh, nearly 200, 100 times in the last two years. And he doesn't care. He'll try to win a game. He'll stand there and take the shots. He'll do anything to win a football game. A tremendous competitor. He is. The question you posed, Dan, is exactly what went through Parcells' mind. On first and ten, over the middle of first down to the tight end, Howard Cross, who filled in relatively capably last year when Bavaro got hurt. He's tackled by Bentley after a 16-yard game. Boy, do they want to see Cross develop, too, because Bavaro is a major question mark after having removed his knee a week ago whether he can come back at all and Dan you know how important Bavaro was to this football team and they're going to have to get something close to and it could be a cross you have cross you also have uh, Bob Morosco uh, from Houston but still nobody uh, anywhere near the capabilities of, of a Bavaro Rusan picks up five on first down as he takes it to the 24 it'll be second and five for the Giants it did sound strange didn't it but that's actually actually happened the screw was put into his knee with the reconstruction of uh, after the season of last year and then it was caused him a problem tendonitis they took it out last week he worked he worked well for one day and then it tightened up on him again Parcells very concerned and he's going to give him a good hard work this Wednesday to see if he can make a determination as to whether or not he'll be ready for the season second and five from the 24 yard line with Bruce on in motion here is Morris so about the 22 he stopped by Darrell Talley. I mentioned at the top, Morris is probably the guy on the bubble. You know they're going to keep Hampton. They will probably keep either Anderson or Morris. They left Joe unprotected. Nobody signed him. But uh, the way it looks right now, there's a good chance he'd wind up in another uniform by opening day. Have you mentioned, Al, how Joe Morris came to be the starter tonight? Coin flip. <laughs> With Otis Anderson, Joe Morris, and uh, on the instructions of Bill Parcell, Joe Morris and Otis Anderson flipped the coin, and Joe won, and he got the starting nod. That last graphic pointed up the diminishing returns the Giants have gotten from Morris in his last two seasons. Roussan straight ahead and close to a first down, and he has it, says Gordon McCarter. First down at the 18 for the Giants. There is Otis Anderson. Last year, in his 11th season in the league, when nobody thought he was capable of gaining 500 yards, he went over 1,000. Dan led the way for a few of them as he was five times over 1,000 with the St. Louis Cardinals. Uh, <laughs> he really mellowed with age. He wasn't the Otis Anderson we remember in the early days, but he got it done for them. And he was the reason they got into the playoff. What a team player he became for the Giants. Bill Parcells uh, really in love with the guy. And justifiably so. First and 10 from the 18. Sims going for the end zone. And Howard Cross was in the area. 
but he was covered by Nate Odom. Phil Sims, too. I mean, in the early days, he would have tried to throw that ball into that crowd. That time, he read it. Rather than get the interception or take the sack, he threw it out of the end zone. You know, we talked about Buffalo and their offensive line problems. Uh, not the case in New York. A very good offensive line that is getting better and coming of age uh, with Elliott, Roberts, Oates, Moore, and Riesenberg up front. Uh, this is a solid, big, strong group that is only going to get better. And a lot of interchangeable parts in that offensive line. On the delay, here's Morris swinging to the outside and turning the corner but picking up only a yard as Leonard Smith, since he came into the league, one of the hardest hitters in the league, makes his presence felt. Further on that offensive line, I know Dan likes to talk about it. You're talking about three number one draft picks. They got it in six players they got a second round and a third round so they did it uh, through the draft and very in a calculating way over the past two or three years of sitting on the bench at the moment he'll see action night Brian Williams right number 59 a first round draft pick he could be starting for most any ball club and Bob Cratch another one that uh, may end up being a starter for the Giants five and a half minutes to go in a scoreless first quarter third and nine from the 17. Four-man rush. The line does its job. The Giants line. The pass was there, but it was dropped by Lionel Manuel, the normally sure-handed receiver for the Giants. Can't hold on, and the Giants will have to settle for three. Or hope to settle for three anyway. Sims got it in there perfectly. Manuel was covered well. And Sims put it in the only place where Manuel could have caught it. Absolutely perfectly thrown, and not bad coverage from our end zone either. Guys are, guys are in mid-season form here in the first yeah. preseason game for these two teams. 35-yard field goal attempt. Matt Stover, a rookie from Louisiana Tech, because Allegre has another injury, and it hits the goal post. Hits the upright and bounces back. So Stover, who truly has a chance to win a job. Why? Because Allegre is so injury-prone, even though he's one of the best pickers in the league. Bad luck for him here, and the game remains scoreless with 5.19 to go in the opening quarter. This is the incumbent, Raul Allegra, even though he's got his uh, jersey on. He's not playing tonight, and Bill Parcells doesn't know when he'll be ready. As Buffalo takes over from the 20-yard line, and McKellar can't hold on out at the 27 with the Aussie covering on the play. And let's take a look at... The field goal, and you talk about a kick that would have been good from about 55 had it gotten through. This is the one. He yeah. had a, needed a nine there, and he took a three with. Yeah, I think that's the result you get from a kid maybe who's a little over anxious and puts a little bit too much into it. A soccer kicker, a right-footed soccer kicker, has a tendency to pull that ball to the left when he goes after it a little too much, and a disappointing first effort there for Stover. Second and 10 from the 20-yard line. Kelly dumps it off to Davis. Davis escapes one tackle and then a second and turns a one-yard loss into a seven-yard gain out to the 27-yard line. He's tackled there by Greg Mark. Good move by Davis out of the left side. He was a starter for Green Bay back in 1987. Let's watch Pepper Martin now. This guy plays with as much enthusiasm as you're ever going to find from a player at any level. Here he is, number 52. He, he plays this game the Stanislavski way all out. Even though, well, this is early. Well, that's a missed tackle by Johnson, but uh, by the same token, I think we've got to give Kenny Davis a lot of credit. That was a fine move back to the inside. Left Pepper Johnson out in the middle of nowhere. Third and a long three from the 27. No score, late first quarter in Buffalo. Kelly going deep. And a leaping catch is made at the giant 40 yard line by James Lofton. Yes, he is still around in his 13th season. Sounds very dramatic. He's in his third decade. I like that part. Great years of Green Bay and then with the Raiders, picked up a year ago. And Harry Williams, a defender for the Giants, and Lofton with a very wise veteran move. Gain momentum coming out of that little move to the outside by grabbing Perry Williams' jersey and getting himself back on stride. And I don't know, Frank, that there's ever been an athlete in the National Football League that I've enjoyed watching run in full stride more than James Lofton. Maybe the most graceful runner I've ever seen. Here's Davis to the outside, picking up a couple. Just all-around athlete. He was a great long jumper at Stanford University. Such fluidity. He's still got it, too, and he's getting up there pretty good. He's 34 years old. You know, my last year that I played wide receiver, I was 34 years old, and everything hurt. 
Did you uh, look like that when you were in the open field? I never looked like that. <laughs> James Lofton. I was always reaching. He was he would be coming back for what I was diving for. Second and seven from the 34 yard line. Kelly throws and out pattern to Lawson. And so after those nine scintillating seasons at Green Bay, two with the Raiders, and now in his second year here, he very nicely compliments Andre Reed. They form a, a pretty good one-two tandem with the up-and-coming Don Beebe. Good receiving core for Jim Kelly. Good play calling by Buffalo, too, using the run exclusively the first time they have the ball and now coming back and almost exclusively in the air. And look at the success they're having. The offensive line is solid up front. Jim Kelly's getting the protection he needs to find a receiver and a very settled Buffalo offense right now. An offense that started this drive at its own 20 has now reached the giant 21 as Davis gets taken down by Greg Jackson coming up from the secondary. I think it hurts to remind once again of the first preseason game for both these teams and I don't know about the Bills, but the weather has been terrible down around the New York area. A lot of rain. The Giants had a couple of practice sessions canceled. So they haven't done that much work, and, and they're looking good. Actually, Buffalo has enjoyed good weather up here in uh, western New York. A little bit of rain. Oh, you came early, huh? and now, Oh, this is... They had no need to stroke Buffalo. We're blacked out here tonight. Yeah, it's a, <laughs> Apocalypse Now is playing on the local ABC of Philly. Look out, Jim. Second and nine, and Kelly gets it away. And McKellar was the intended receiver, and he was double covered. Well, Johnny Cooks comes on a blitz, and no one from Buffalo bothered to pick him up. Watch the top of your screen. There comes Cooks, and, boy, that is an invitation to have your quarterback destroyed when you don't cover the backside. Somebody has to account for the outside linebacker to the quarterback's blind side. Well, isn't this what frightens you about that makeshift line they have in there, Dan? You've got your high-priced quarterback out there working, and you could lose him right here. Well, in a situation like that, either the line has to slide out or that's one of the back's responsibilities. Third and nine from the Giants, 21. And Kelly going for the end zone and trying to get position on the play was Steve Tasker, but he couldn't bring it down. Covered on the play by Renee Thompson as Tasker was able to get inside him but couldn't hold on. Kelly this time with good protection tried to lay it up so Caster could go up for the ball good coverage both playing the football so there is no interference call. Tasker had the ball go right through his hands oh. and the ball struck him on the face mask. Scott Norwood one of the most accurate kickers in the league not a long range field goal kicker but deadly from inside 40. This one is a 39 yard attempt to try to give Buffalo the lead. Snap is good, so is the placement, and Norwood is in midseason form. So the Bills score first. Field goal by Norwood comes with 131 to play in the opening quarter in Buffalo. Dusk in Buffalo on a very pleasant evening before a crowd of, I guess, about 45,000 at Rick Stadium in the Buffalo suburb of Orchard Park. John Neese, a rookie out of Arizona, will kick off. We mentioned Scott Norwood is a deadly field goal kicker, but his kickoffs have been very short. So they drafted Neese, and he's going to try to win the job as the punter, and if he does that, he'll also kick off. And Rodney Hampton, the Giants' number one draft choice, along with Dave Meggett, are back to receive. So we could get our first look at Hampton, but instead it is Meggett, and he'll down it three yards deep, and the Giants will take it at the 20-yard line. That's and a ball that during the regular season, Almega would have returned. That was a good return kick, but you know that guy can return a ball. And the crowd liked it because they know that Norwood has been very short with kickoffs, and that's the reason for the elongated cheer. There was a flag down on the play. Gordon there is no foul. The play was resulted in the touchback. There is no holding. First and 10 on the 20. Bill Sims to lead the Giants in what figures to be his second and final series of this game before they go to the bench. 
What about the Giants with plan B? Well, they went out and signed three guys. Morosco out of Houston, where they went to the run and shoot, so you don't need a tight end. Fagan's the cornerback. Thornton out of Denver. They also got Everson Walls from Dallas as an unrestricted free agent. Sims on first down with a deep drop, sets up the screen. This is Lewis Tillman. And the second year back out of Jackson State, where he broke a lot of Walter Payton's records, takes it out to close to the 30. So the Giants signed three plus Walls, the unrestricted free agent, but they lost 10, including Rutledge, the backup QB, former number one pick Adams, the tight end Moat, Damian Johnson and Frank Winters from the offensive line. And in addition, Duckins and White, two defensive linemen, Cox and Terry Kennard, the longtime starting safety, and the kicker Bjorn Nitmo. And if you looked at those 10 players, the player they would desperately like to have back would be Zeke Moet. On second and inches, this is Tillman again, picking up two. And one reason they'd love to have Moat back is what we talked about before, the uncertainty surrounding Mark Bavaro. And the inexperience of Chandler, Cross, and Roscoe. Bill Parcells, who features his tight end so much in the offense, not only in pass receiving, but also in the strong side running attack. Without good blocking at the tight end position, the giant running game really suffers. Tough too when you make a great running back your number one draft pick and uh, lose the key man of that offensive attack in the running game. Of course, he's not gone yet, but it's very questionable whether Bavaro is going to be ready at least by the early part of the season. End of a rapid first quarter. Buffalo leads 3-0. We'll be back after this commercial message and a word from our ABC station. Rich Stadium, Orchard Park, New York. Al Michaels, Frank Gifford, Dan Deardorff. We start the second quarter. The Giants have the ball at their own 32. And on first and 10, Bill Sims with a pump fake and then delivers incomplete off to the right side, intended for Lewis Tillman out of the backfield. And I'm already seeing something I didn't think I'd see, and that's Phil Sims still on the field here as we move into the second quarter. There's the numbers from the first quarter. Nothing overly dramatic in that group. The yardage advantage going to Buffalo as well as time of possession. But the lead belongs to the team from Buffalo as well. Three zip. Second and ten from the 32. Off the play fake. Sims stepping up, and for the second time, he's going to run, and he slides out to the 39-yard line where Bentley stops him. <laughs> that's that's going to get Phil Sims a trip to the bench more than anything else. Bill Parcells is not going to uh, be overly pleased with that. I mean, you just if they would lose Phil Sims, we're now looking at a team in severe crisis. And Phil's getting up there, too. He's had a lot of nagging injuries last year. The main one, of course, the bad ankle, but he's been... Buffing it around for the past couple of years. Mm -hmm. He's tough. Very. But he's getting into that area after being around for 12 years when things start to come apart. And the fellow there, number 12, with the helmet, uh, that's uh, Scooter Molander. I think he might be our next giant quarterback. Either he or Hostet. Whoa! Look out as Leonard. Leggett pays the price. Who else but Leonard Smith, who did that for years with the Cardinals and brought that same act to Buffalo two seasons ago. And he nailed Maggot short of the first down. A good read by Sims on the defense. He knew he had Maggot there with the blitz coming in. He got it to him ordinarily against most any other defender coming up from that strong safety spot. He'd get the first down. But look at this, Leonard Smith. You know him well, Dan. Oh, well, just uh, the day he came to the Cardinals, I mean, this guy just had big hit written all over him. And, of course, Maggot there had no chance to protect himself. Never even had a chance to square his shoulders upfield. Another one of your former teammates. Yeah, there. The Giants uh, have done well with Anderson. The Bills have done well with Leonard Smith. That was Billy Smith kicking for the Giants and Chris Hale returning it to about the 31. 39-yard kick, an 11-yard run back, 13-21 left in the first half. Bruce Smith on the left, one of the great defensive ends in the league. He had knee surgery, and uh, he's being rested. Speaking, Speaking of, of Smith, Smith, yeah, there's, <laughs> there's stereo. Leonard, Leonard, no <laughs> relation. Brought to you in stereo tonight. Buffalo takes over. Kelly is done for the night. Here's Frank Reich in his quarterback for a couple of series, and he hands the ball off to Don Smith, mentioning before that Don Smith is the guy picked up from Tampa Bay where he was injury prone, and they're hoping that he will fill the Ronnie Harmon third down role. 
So Smith trying to win a job, and Reich has already won a job as the backup quarterback, and he cemented that role by going 3-0 and in relief of Kelly last year and signing about as lucrative a deal as any backup quarterback ever. He makes about $600,000 a season. Football is very, very popular in Buffalo, and their quarterbacks make big bucks. Big, big bucks. Second and ten. Here's Smith finding no room among others Washington he actually won the, uh, earned that money Dan and I were doing that game now we were out doing the World Series and I could play little or not at all because Kelly is, has been very durable he went down with that separated shoulder he came in and beat the Rams and won two other games three touchdowns against the Jets and he kept the Bills in it ABC's Monday Night Football brought to you by Dodge for exciting cars and tough trucks it's Advantage Dodge Third and nine. Reich out of the shotgun from the 32. Buffalo on top, three to nothing. A very deep drop by Reich. Gets it off to Davis, and he's taken down from behind by Carl Banks, who appears to be in midseason form. We've said it a couple of times. The offensive machine of the Buffalo Bills is not here. That was, of course, is Thurman Thomas, who had a great year last year. Led the league in total yards and scrimmage with nearly 2,000 yards, and he is one of those bills not in camp. Give credit to Greg Mark, the rookie defensive lineman for the Giants, who flushed Reich out of the pocket that time, forced him to run to his right. Rick Tootin vying for the punting job. Mega takes it at the 15, and Mega, who averaged 12.7 per run back last year on punts, Takes this one back 10 yards to the 25. From there, will the Giants take over on the short end of a 3 0 count with 11.07 to go in the half? We're back, and Phil Sims is done for the night, and Scooter Molander, given name Andrew, who last year was with Cleveland for a while in preseason, then spent the balance of the year on the Kansas City Chiefs developmental squad. Takes over at the 26. He's trying to win a job as the Giants' number three quarterback. And he hands it off to Lewis Tillman, who gets thrust back after gaining a yard out to the 27-yard line. Molander out of Colorado State. He grew up in Arizona, where our producer, Kenny Wolf, scouted him as an eight-year-old. 6'2", 200-pounder. Performed well for the team from Fort Collins and here he is trying to to win the job as the number three quarterback behind Sims who is clearly number one and Hostetler who is clearly number two second and eight from the 28 yard line and this is Aaron Emanuel the rookie out of the University of Southern California and he can't get on track Jeff Wright among others number 91 making the tackle Seventh round draft pick of the Giants, and you think back a few years ago, maybe the most highly recruited high school athlete came out of high school in Palmdale, California, with over 5,400 yards rushing, 54 touchdowns, and then it just never came together. At USC, a lot of nagging injuries, a lot of personal problems, but he has shown well in the Giants' training camp, and we should see more of him tonight. USC to the New York Giants, a magical path, Frank. <laughs> oh, indeed. <laughs> Third and nine, that's Hampton also in the backfield. Play clock ticking down to five as Molander out of the shotgun on third down and nine. Nearly has it intercepted, overthrew the intended receiver, in fact, two of them, and John Hagee had it in his hands and couldn't hold on. That'll look good in the films when they check it out. A couple of Giants receivers right together. And Molander back has plenty of protection as Parcells gives him the offensive line that he needs for the protection as you can see the two receivers right together that'll attract the crowd for you ball actually touched by ingram and he popped it up in the air and that's the old deflection drill you see the dbs work on all the time this is billy smith to kick chris hale back to accept it for buffalo and takes it on a hop at the 32 yard line can't find room to the outside lee russon goes down there to make the tackle after a 41 yard punt and a two-yard return. Buffalo ball. The Bills on top. 3-0. 9.30 to go in the half. Molander checking with the coaches upstairs after a three-and-out series. He's hopeful of getting back in the next time the Giants have the ball. 
Bill Sims in the center of your picture there is done for the night after guiding the Giants on their first two series. Molander puts that helmet right back on and buttons the chin strap. He doesn't want anyone to think that he's not the guy going back in. He's ready. Frank Reich retreats from the 34, nearly has that one intercepted. Everson Walls. Barnes, the intended receiver, and Everson, Bar Everson Walls, no stranger to interceptions. He had 44 in his illustrious career in Dallas. Nearly has the, the pick here. Uh, the league three times, and I like what Bill Parcells said about Everson Walls. He said the ball comes to him. But again, he has great <laughs> timing. Uh, he was he was in there just a little early, but not early enough that you're going to call it in most cases. <laughs> well, in this case. <laughs> oh, I've seen him do it so many times, and you have too, Dan. He's great timing. Oh, he's got great timing. It, yes, so he's not that fast. Just his timing was about a half a second off there. On second and ten, this is Carwell Gardner. He's a rookie out of Louisville who originally enrolled at the University of Kentucky, was a defensive end. Howard Schnellenberger made him a fullback, and he's trying to win a job. So there's a rookie looking for a job, and as far as the Bills are concerned, we showed you some of the Giants' comings and goings. What about Buffalo? Well, they signed Don Smith, who they hope will be their third down back, and also Rick Tootin, the punter, but they lost five in plan B, including Ronnie Harmon. And Fred Smurlis, the longtime nose tackle, now with San Francisco. Their punter, John Kidd, went to San Diego. Third and four, Bills from the 40. Giants show blitz, and the Giants also show offside. Free play for Buffalo, and Reich slides forward out to the 43-yard line. And that turf is very slick. Take your pick. Clearly, Carl Banks was across the line of scrimmage when the ball was snapped. You always wait to see whether or not one of the Bills' offensive linemen might have flinched a little bit. I don't think that's the case here. This will be an encroachment on the Jints. Should be yardage for the first down, too, because it was third and four and about four and a half yards. Gordon McCarter lining it up. Offside, defense. Five yards, the penalties are not for a first down. And Buffalo has it now out at the 45-yard line. You can get another look at the Bills' second-round draft pick, Carwell Gardner, out of Louisville. He was a defensive end before he became a running back as a senior. And it was Howard Schnellenberger that changed him to the running back. And he has a chance to not only to win a job, but with a great camp, he could be a starter because uh, Kennebrew is not set in cement as the starter. And it's almost intercepted again. Several near interceptions already. This one by Adrian White. It was almost intercepted twice by the Giants. Two of them had hands on it. Yeah, Guyton touched it first, and he deflected it right to Adrian White. And and then White, uh, that's, that's just one that during the regular season, you just... Stay on the ground and pummel your fists when you drop one like that. But Myron Guyton there, number 29, was the first one to touch it. Good defensive play by Guyton. Interesting flip-flop there. Guyton, uh, an eighth-round pick a year ago, was a strong safety, and now he is a starting free safety, and Adrian White is trying to take over that strong safety position. Well, very seldom do teams get production from an eighth-round draft choice like the Giants well, got they had good production. <laughs> he led the team in tackles yeah. last year. A couple of interceptions. On second and ten, this is Don Smith. Over the right side for a minimal game. Picks up about three. It'll be third down. Saturday on ABC Sports. We're all going to be busy. We all go to work, huh? First up, the Volvo International, Yvonne Lindell, competing for a piece of the million-dollar pie. That's the 2.30 Eastern and Pacific. Dan will be with Alex Wallow, bringing you the Nigel Ben. Iran Barkley fight at 4.30 on Wide World. Also the Frank J. DeFrancis Memorial Dash from Maryland. And I'll be at Saratoga for the Travers Stakes. Two races in a fight this Saturday, and Frank will be hosting out of New York. <laughs> Outside of that, we're not busy. Third down and six from the 49-yard line. And again, it's deflected. Intended for Barnes, the former Bear. Carl Banks helping to break it up. Fourth down. We've seen more balls in the air here today than a Oakland A's baseball game. This is sloppy receiving by both team sets of receivers and their defensive backs. Nobody seems to be able to hold on to the ball. Dave Meggett's turn now. From the 49-yard line, 
Rick Tootin to kick. And the plan B acquisition from Philadelphia lost a short punt that's caught by Megat, a fair catch made at the 21 yard line after only a 30 yard kick. We have 7.13 to go in the first half. Rich Stadium, Orchard Park, New York, still 3 0 Bill. Team to play in the opening half. Rich Stadium in Buffalo, where the Bills and the Giants each begin their preseason schedule. They are the last two teams to open. Does that carpet there undulate as much as it looked like Boy. on that shot? <laughs> <laughs> no wonder these people are falling down. It's a well worn <laughs> carpet. It's also been basically dry here for weeks in Buffalo, and it rained today, so it's very slick. From just outside the 20, this is Aaron Emanuel, who takes it out to the 26, and a penalty marker is down at the 23. And it will go against the Giants. Get the word Holding from the Carter. Number 60 on the offense. 10 yards, repeat first down. Eric Moore. Well, we're looking at Emmanuel. What about the Giants as far as running backs are concerned? There's Anderson last year over 1,000. He's fighting to maintain his job. Tillman figures to be there. Carson is uh, Parcells' secret weapon, as he calls him. Meggett, definitely. Great third down back. Roussan fighting for his job. Morris, perhaps, on the bubble. You know Hampton will make it, number one pick. And Emmanuel fighting for a job. That's the way all of their running backs would stack up at the moment. First and 20. Here's Hampton. His first carry as a giant is a very impressive. Oh, and in fly. he's out in front. And yep. the rookie out of Georgia, who comes out after his junior year, goes 89 yards for a touchdown. Oh, and he broke a couple of tackles near the line of scrimmage. Now, if I was Hampton, I wouldn't play anymore. I'd, uh, All year. <laughs> I'd bag it for the night. Yard <laughs> per carry? <laughs> I'd bag it for the night. Well, number one draft choices are supposed to make things happen. How's this? Try this on for size. Breaks away from one tackle there. Another one there. Big man, big and strong. Durable, too. Sensational. From a lot of injuries at Georgia. Sensational blocking up front, Frank. Oh, yeah. No one really had a clean shot at Hampton. He did a little moving around at the line of scrimmage, but nobody really put a shoulder pad on him. You know, you're not going to tackle him with the arms. You know that. He's 215-pounder and big lower part of body and he just kicks through tackles as he did then uh, i cross my legs light up a cigar and spend the rest of the evening on the pine you can't top that george young is smiling a little bit <laughs> rodney hampton number one pick out of georgia and uh, for a year down there he played back at tim warley and then warley went to pittsburgh had a good rookie season with the steelers hampton comes out after his junior year you just saw him go 89 yards and Stover's kickoff is taken by Al Edwards, who brings it out to about the 23-yard line. And the Bills set up shop from there as we take a look from the end zone at the run by Hampton. We talked about the Giants and their huge and talented offensive line. Look how they screen everybody off. Hampton is only going to take one serious shot. Boy, there's a good move to the inside. Watch the left. There's Hagee, number 22, that comes in. But still, most everyone manhandled up front by the Giants in their offensive line. And... From there, it's over. Another thing that Hampton will give the Giants, and it's something they haven't had in a lot of years, and that is an outside run in the attack. They haven't been outside in so long, they don't know what it's like mm -hmm. out there. And Hampton can do that. So can earn Emmanuel. Their longest run from scrimmage last year was a paltry 36 yards by Anderson. Here's the rookie fullback Gardner taking it out across the 25. Stopped at the 27 by Bobby Abrams, a good-looking rookie outside linebacker from Michigan. Next week, we will be at Mile High Stadium in Denver. And again, our preseason games start an hour earlier than they do in the regular season. So at 8 Eastern and 5 Pacific, we'll be at Mile High. And we'll find out about Dan Reeves and hope that he's doing well in his recovery as the Broncos take on the San Francisco 49ers. And the reports we get on Reeves are very, very good and very, very favorable at this point. Have those two teams played recently? <laughs> uh, not a game. Don't remind Dan. <laughs> On second down and six. Gardner again. Not much. Now to about the 29. It'll be third and let's call it four. That 49er Bronco game next week. Of course, a rematch of sorts. 
from Super Bowl 24 held this past January and what was it 55 to 10 That's what it was the route by the Niners as they won their fourth and of course the major story of 1990 here in the National Football League is can the 49ers three peak and at the same time win an unprecedented Super Bowl number five you might say about that Super Bowl the game wasn't as close as the score would indicate you know, you know you're right it wasn't <laughs> Third down and four from the 29. They're looking for a one for the time, aren't they? Going into traffic, and a penalty marker is down as Don Smith was there, but in his face, Adrian White, who disputes the call, but the referee or the official right there to make the decision and throw the flag immediately. Well, you've got to play the football. Adrian White has been around long enough. He knows that. You better be looking back at the quarterback and playing the football and watch Adrian White. He's going to have his back to the quarterback and he's just going to run into the receiver. You never turned around. He never turned around to look back at the quarterback and that is going to bring the call. That's going to bring it out every time and Don Smith was in good position and that's a good call. Interference all the way. It gives Buffalo the ball at the 45 yard line. Bills trail 7-3. 4.30 to go in the half. Gardner bounces off a man at the line of scrimmage and turns no gain into a two-yard pickup. Pepper Johnson and Everson Walls converge on the tackle. A rookie mistake, wouldn't you say, Frank? It's tough to bounce to the outside in this league. You may get away with it in college, but hard to do in the NFL. Well, as we mentioned a moment ago, he hasn't played running back that long, only his senior year down at Louisville, and he's going to learn. He's big, he's strong, he as a senior, first time in the backfield after being a defensive end, he, he rushed for almost 600 yards. So he'll learn, and they have a lot of hopes for him. You might see highlight material of an Eric Dickerson or an O.J. Simpson doing that, but more often than not, you end up losing yardage. Reich on second and seven, throws it right into the hands of who else <laughs> but Everson Wall. The ball just comes to it. Yep. <laughs> 44 career interceptions with Dallas and trying to win a job now with the Giants and he's given them the ball back. He has two positions he can play. He played that cornerback so well for the Cowboys for so many years before he got himself in hot water down there a year ago. And of course we mentioned earlier three times he led the NFL in interceptions. But I love what Parcells says about him. The ball just comes to him. Well seldom has it come to him any easier than Frank Wright just delivered it. Everson Walls had nothing more to do than stand there and receive it. Scooter Molander who handed the ball off to Hampton as Rodney took off for 87 yards and this time uh, a few yards less as Hampton gets stopped after a pickup of two by Marcus Patton the rookie out of UCLA out of the 45 yard line. Marcus Patton, a player that is in Joe Gibbs' doghouse uh, after an incident last week in a scrimmage between the Redskins and the Buffalo Bills as Patton comes crashing in in a scrimmage where the quarterback is not to be touched. And, and he drops the Washington quarterback, and we've got a hurt player, Al. Jeff Rutledge. He's got a shoulder injury, has to leave the scrimmage, and Joe Gibbs leaves incensed. Marcus Patton saying, well, I'm just trying to dodge a back that was going to block me. I danced out of the way, and I hit Rutledge, and, well, unfortunate. That was Hampton for five. I'll tell you one thing about Hampton. The, despite the missing P, he put a big smile on the face of George Young, the Giants' general manager, and uh, he'll be in the booth at halftime to talk about the four holdouts, among other things. There, uh, there's Wellington Mara and George Young in the front row. Third and three. Molander out of the shotgun gives it to Rusan, who picks up the first down and takes it to the 39 yard line. So Molander leading this charge by the Giants into Buffalo territory. Williams makes the tackle. First and 10 at the 39. Giants last year under Parcells. We mentioned a good running game, good ball control, but the statistics wouldn't indicate it. Only Miami and Phoenix gained fewer yards per carry than did the Giants, but they made the most out of the least did New York on their way to a 12 and four season. Timeout, two minutes to go in the half. 
Two minutes left in the first half at Rich Stadium, Orchard Park, New York. The Giants on top 7-3, to three, thanks to an 89-yard run by Rodney Hampton, accounting for 89 of those 147. Scooter Molander trying to win the job as the Giants' number three quarterback. Takes him up to the 39-yard line, first and 10. Play fake to Hampton. Molander goes deep over the middle and has it juggled and intercepted by Dwight Drain, who gets up and brings it all the way back out to the 35-yard line. Now the officials, I think, are going to have a little discussion. Did Drain hit the ground as a result of contact with a giant player, or did he go down on his own? If he goes down on his own, he's free to get up and run it. Now they're going to bring it back. Yeah, they're going to bring it back and say he went down because a giant forced him down. Molander making the rookie error, just following the receiver, didn't even see Drain back there playing in the outfield as a free safety. And he's just reading Molander's eyes all the way, and Molander never once took his eyes away from the intended target. So that's, that's he, the way a free safety gets all over. That's what Parcells was telling him right at the moment. Now watch Molander. He turns. He looked right for his intended receiver. Never even sees Drain come into the picture. And was there contact made? Drain bobbles the ball. And there is the touch that they are saying will cause the ball to be brought back. And that made by Emmanuel. Well, that was close. Did he touch him on the foot? Looks like he might have grazed a uh, grazed a foot. This is awful close. At most. No, yeah. he did touch him. Looked like he might have flicked him on the left foot. Well, whatever. The officials rule that it's down there. Mm -hmm. But the interception stands. At the 24-yard line. So Drain picks it off. They did review it in the replay booth. Ruled down by contact. Replay uh, in effect tonight. It is not in games played on neutral sites in preseason, such as was the case in Canton, Ohio last week. Nothing neutral about Rich Stadium. Not at all. One of the great crowds in professional football. Frank White on first and 10 from the 24-yard line, going deep over the middle and incomplete you were shameless <laughs> i like my friends in buffalo it's my it's my new second home here how'd you look at those thunderclouds a while ago and say it might snow any minute it's, uh, it's a shame that it's blacked out here i'm making new friends <laughs> that, and they don't even know it yet <laughs> al edwards the intended receiver but the pass is well overthrown and then right throws and that one is incomplete a lot of white shirts in the area and just one blue one that belonged to Don Smith. It'll be third and ten. Marv Levy, who took over in midseason 1986. Something that's been lost in the shuffle. The Bills winning back-to-back -back division titles, and there's only one other team that's won titles back-to-back -back in 88 and 89, and that's the 49ers, the NFC West. Off to Cincinnati, and after the season of 88, Cincinnati came within seconds of winning the Super Bowl. Third and ten, ball at the 24-yard line. Reich is one for seven. Now two for eight. Gardner makes the catch, and again, it's very slippery, as we mentioned. It's been a dry summer, and then they had a little bit of rain today, and Banks says we'll take a timeout to conserve time, as Buffalo will have to punt with a minute 27 to go in the half. 40 seconds on the We've talked about it raining here throughout the day and also last night. And you can see the water just coming up off the carpet as Gardner goes down far short of the first down. It'll be fourth down and Rick seven. Giants taking a timeout. And David Meggett. And they'll get the, the ball Giants. back as Meggett sets up uh, between his 25 and 30. Where there's a guy you love to see handle the ball at the end of a half. Two to the kick, averaging 39 yards a punt. You got 127 on the clock. You got to make it back there. He can get you back there where you can start thinking about open offense instead of a conservative kill the clock type of offense. Here's the fight we'll have for you on Sunday. Marlon Starling and Maurice Blocker coming your way from Reno. 
Sutton's kick is angled to the near side. Meggett fields it at the 22. He got an illegal block, and that will be brought back as he takes it to the 40-yard line. He was able to escape the first tackle only because of an illegal block, and the Giants will set up deep in their own territory. Illegal foul, number 23, receiving team. At the spot of the foul, half the distance, first down. Harry Williams. Well, that's one way a starting cornerback can work his way off the special teams. Get called for a couple of penalties. Yes. That's one of those situations where you don't mind getting yanked. Ooh, and you see Parcells. He doesn't <laughs> yeah. smile at that. He does not like to see that from his veterans. He's got enough problems out there with youngsters trying to make this ball club. Well, Scooter Molander takes over as he tries to guide the Giants down the field. 1.15 to go. One problem you've got when you're uh, a young quarterback, as Molander is, is anonymity on the flip card given to the media tonight. He is listed as number 18, Scott Hollander. So they got the number wrong, the first name wrong, and the second. And the only Hollander you know, Dan, is La Xavier, I guess. Huh? <laughs> oh, you're so no. bad. True yeah. anonymity is to be a fullback, though, for Buffalo. <laughs> They're not on the flip card at all. <laughs> first and 10 from the 13-yard line in Odessa Turner. And if you thought you were going to draw me into a conversation about that. Well, you only read her column on the way to the Pigskin preview, right? I, well, I wouldn't waste that in a preseason game. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that's the best place to waste <laughs> That's uh, that's opening day material there. <laughs> Seven yard pickup here at second down and three with a minute eight. I always knew you were well read. I that's had no idea it was that extensive. <laughs> you can look at the pictures occasionally. From the shotgun, a little mistiming on that handoff, but it works anyway for a first down as Dave Mega takes it down to the 27. <laughs> Under a minute now, clock running. Giants have two timeouts left. Molander throws, and Mark Ingram can't make the catch at the 37-yard line. He's covered by Chris Hale. Frank, I guess Scooter would like to be the second Scooter in New York, huh? Take him out, Dwight! Isn't Rizzuto? Bill Rizzuto's Holy victory. cow! <laughs> Frank, <laughs> Frank. <laughs> I had to long, think. long distance. <laughs> I was in another area code. <laughs> <laughs> Second and ten from the 28-yard line. Molander sets up the screen. Meggett, he broke three of them last year on plays like that for better than 50 yards. This time only out to the 40-yard line. I think in a preseason game, and particularly the first one, you won't see a better screen set up than the Giants just set that up. Now, I know they haven't worked on it that much, but again, they are going with their veteran offensive line. Giants take a timeout. They'll have one more. Ball is at the 40-yard line. Dave Meggett, last year, the, the three longest plays of the season, 62, 57, and 53, all of them coming on little screens or dump passes. He's exciting once again, as we found out on opening night, his first regular season game in Washington last year. Oh, he can scare a defense when he comes in there in that third down. They can use him, too, now as a wide receiver. It could give Bill Parcells some flexibility in his personnel as to whether he's going to keep an extra running back or a wide receiver because Megan has been working on the outside. And of all the positives that happened to the New York Giants last year, the super year turned in by Otis Anderson, Lawrence Taylor with another big year. The arrival of Dave Meggett, I think, clearly the biggest plus for the New York Giants in 1989. It looks like for years to come. Molander from the 40 overthrows Manuel by 10 yards and has it intercepted by John Hagee. Well, Manuel is cutting back yeah. toward the middle. Yeah, Manuel goes to the middle, and Molander thinks that Manuel's going to break to the sideline. And Molander throws the ball at the break, and... I think we'll be able to tell by the look on Bill Parcell's face who was right and who was wrong. <laughs> Ooh, and he looks at uh, Lionel Manuel and said, where are you going? Lionel says, I read it this way, coach. Said, probably thinking if Phil had been there, Phil would have made the adjustment. And yeah, we'll sort that out tomorrow. Yeah. Hopefully for Bolander, not back in Colorado. 24 seconds to go in the half from the 46-yard line. Wright 
50-yard line. Is it a catch? I it think is, it is. And a fumble, but Buffalo has it. Al Edwards with the reception and the fumble, and then the ball is recovered just shy of the 50 by John Davis, the guard. Well, Perry Williams, who got flagged for that illegal block, this time comes up with a hit that separates the ball from Edwards. There's Perry Williams, gets the right hand in from behind and gets it on the tip of the ball and kicks it out, but good hustle by Davis that time coming up with the ball. Bills take a timeout. They have 14 seconds remaining. Parcells talking to Hostetler, and we'll see Jeff in the second half. Bill Sims with the uh, windbreaker on is done for the night. After a lot of people were talking series. about possibility of Hostetler playing a lot more this season, maybe perhaps even taking the job. He directed the Giants on a couple of in a couple of good games a year ago. He's much more has much more mobility than Phil Sims. Good athlete. Ran for a couple of touchdowns and a win over Phoenix when Phil was hurt last year with a bad ankle. And would apparently be the quarterback of the future. He's been waiting a long time. The play is being reviewed. Play is being reviewed, but we can mention here too, one difference this year with the replay rule is that the replay official is limited to two minutes. A buzzer goes off with 15 seconds to go to tell him he's got 15 more. Does that mean it's and done? And then an alarm, yep, it means it's well done at two minutes, and you have to have a decision by that point or the play stands. And again, replay is here for 1990. It is on a, again, as it has been in the past, it's here for one year, and it has to be voted on again, and it carries by the bare minimum, a 21 to seven voting margin by the NFL owners. And they say that it would not have carried had they not put this limit on of two minutes. There was that much opposition to it. So in a way, that was kind of a compromise. We assume they are questioning possession by Edwards. You have to get both feet down after catching. The play stands as ruled. Dead ball spot here, second down. So they confirm a catch and a fumble and a Buffalo recovery at the 50-yard line. What they were looking for was to see if Edwards had both feet down on the field with possession of the ball before the hit by Williams, and they ruled that he did. Movement in the line, and the play is dead. The play is whistled dead. Replay that time took 1.05, so Chuck Heberling had another 55 seconds to review that play, had he so desired. Full start, left guard, offense. Please reset the clock to 14 seconds. Thank you. 14 seconds to go in the half. We've talked about the Giants not in camp. George Young to address that at halftime. And those are uh, four pretty big names, all starters. You know, lost in that a little bit is Mark Collins, the value he is to the Giants' defense. He is a superb man-for-man -man defender. And when you have one of those, you can rotate everyone else and, and get double coverage much more easily than you can when you don't have one. On second down from the 45-yard line, a little pass over the middle to Don Smith. That's next to nothing with eight seconds to go in the half. Adrian White makes the tackle. Meanwhile, Lawrence Taylor being out, I mean, he's the kind of athlete that could come in and probably in a week be ready to play. He says he needs a couple of weeks, but he is that kind of an athlete. He'll come in pretty much in high gear. Uh, indeed, he does come in. You know, I talked to Bill Belichick, their defensive coordinator, earlier today, and you know, you really have to feel for these defensive coordinators uh, and really all the coaches because they spend all offseason plotting out how they want training camp to go. And then the people they want to work with aren't there. And, it, and it's a double edged sword. Not only are Marshall and Taylor not getting the work that they need, but on the other side, you've got the Carl Banks and, and the Dorsey's in camp. And yet they don't get a chance to work next to the people that are going to be there during Indeed. the regular season. So a lot of wasted time during a training camp when when key veterans and a number of key veterans aren't there. Like I said about Collins for Belichick, he would like to work the scheme of defense that he's going to go with this season. And they're going to leave Collins many times one on one and get double coverage somewhere else. But they can't do that with the people they have now. Now, what's Lawrence Taylor want? Two million dollars a year? What, is, what does he say when he sees that Joe Montana got four million? Third and seven. Wright airs it out, hopes for a completion or a penalty, and gets neither. Instead, Greg Jackson comes down with the ball, and we're out of time. 
First half is over. Highlighted by Hampton's 89-yard run. Halftime score is 7-3, Giants. And back we come after this message from the National Football League and a word from our ABC station. The Toyota Halftime Report. Brought to you by your Toyota dealers and their quality line of cars and trucks. Toyota, I love what you do for me. Now let's return to Buffalo, New York and Frank Gifford. Back at Rich Stadium in Buffalo, New York, the Giants. Their first preseason game against the Bills in their first preseason game. The Giants leading Buffalo 7-3. And now joining us in our booth, one of the most respected men in football today, the Vice President and General Manager George Young of the Giants. And George, we've talked already this first half, and I know everyone who follows this game is aware of it, of the tremendous number of holdouts, unsigned players. I, I know it's easy to say it's all because of the television money that's flowed into the game, but what are some of the other reasons for the dramatic increase in it? Well, it's been coming on for a while, and I think the uh, the activities of the, the agents, I think they're better organized. I think they get a little uh, help from the union, and I think they're, they see an opportunity to drive up the price. Even last year, when there wasn't any TV contract, like the first round was driven up about 40 percent, but I think it's really a, a concerted effort on their part to kind of drive up the market. And, I guess they see what's going on in baseball and they think that we have 162 dates where we only have 16 but I think it's a, they see an opportunity and they're trying to take advantage of it. How about the uh, celebrated uh, highly publicized contracts of the Joe Montana's the Randall Cunningham's Jim Kelly uh, the players sit around and read this and say hey what about me. Well they certainly do but there's a quarterback market that was forced up if you can find one spot where a club has to sign a guy for a large sum of money and then everybody aims at that that's the the benchmark see and that's one of the problems now as soon as say Kelly gets a, a heavy contract that's the benchmark now Montana's got a contract and all of a sudden somebody will say that they want that contract and so you want to try to not to have those benchmark contracts but you also want to pay the guy what he's worth but what happens too often is a, a guy who isn't as good as a guy with the big contract says I want that one if not I'm going to hold out and if he's a a, a player that's somebody that you know that's needed it kind of drives up the market you have one of the more publicized holdouts uh, arguably the one of the best defensive players if not the best defensive player in pro football Lawrence Taylor uh, we understand he's asking for something like two million dollars he's in his option year which is a contract uh, your thoughts well the one thing is in violation of his contract that's the first thing but uh, we have a lot of Humpty Dumpty's right now that are asking for a million dollars and I, you can't really get mad at Lawrence if he says these Humpty Dumpty's are asking for a million I should ask for two and so we understand that we know he's a great player uh, he's been nine years of the pro bowl or the, the record is there but uh, we have uh, you know 50 players on the team we, we want them on our team we'll work the thing out we work it out before and uh, somehow or other these things always occur but we we anticipated the holdout but we got three other holdouts we have four there are 110 holdouts in the league and we're working on it every day and uh, there was communication with myself and Joe Carrage today and there was on Friday and and the same thing with the other players and we're, we'll whittle the thing down I mean really uh, the first day of training camp the world does not end if the guy uh, misses the first day of training camp but we the sooner these guys get in there's a point of no return here and I think we're getting a little closer to it when you get into the second and third preseason game. George, what do you say to your coach Bill Parcells who in talking about the Lawrence Taylor situation uses a baseball analogy and says uh, how do you expect to win the pennant when you can't sign a Mickey Mantle. Well you know what we do in this game we can't have everything that we want and what we do is that we play with the cards we're dealt with and I have to do it at my level coaches have to do it at their level you'll sleep a lot better at night if you realize I'll do the best with the people I have we understand the situation and we don't have any options you know you can solve any situation you want by just putting your pocketbook on the table and that that irritant ends and five other guys line up in your at your office the next day or you have three other guys that walk out then the coach has got more trouble so remember it's how you, we don't want to lose a game in the front office. If we do something that's irresponsible, we're going to lose games in the front office. We don't want to do that. I have a feeling you won't. George Young, general manager, vice president of the Giants, thank you for stopping by, George. It's been a busy week. It's going to be busier next week. Thanks, and I hope things keep looking good. Thank you, and we'll be back. Rich Stadium, Buffalo, New York, for our halftime activities in just a moment. 
Stretch Stadium, Buffalo, New York. The Giants lead Buffalo 7-3 at halftime. Frank Gifford along with Al Michaels and Dan Deerdorf. And, and just talking to George Young, one of the things he didn't touch on was the fact that, uh, say, Lawrence Taylor, who I think is the best player along with Reggie White and defensive player in pro football, if you give a Lawrence Taylor a $2 million, a one seven five, what are the Carl Banks going to think? A lot of people think that Banks is the equal or close to it of Lawrence Taylor, and he's playing for 900. You know, Frank, all that's really changed through the years are the numbers. This has been going on in all sports for 20 years. Somebody always has the biggest contract. It's Joe Montana, it's Jose Canseco, it's Wayne Gretzky, it's Magic Johnson. It doesn't matter. It's a great country. It's a free market economy. And until we go to socialism or, or communism, this is going to happen. And it gives us something to talk about during preseason. These guys will be back in camp. You know, the other side of it is the New York Giants don't make $1 more if they have Lawrence Taylor in camp. I mean, they're sold out every game. The television money comes in anyway. Granted, Lawrence Taylor has tremendous bargaining power because of the player he is. But the Giants do not make one nickel more with Lawrence Taylor on their roster. you got to consider that. I understand that, too. But I know Wellington Mara. I know Tim Mara. I know George Young. I know Bill Parcells. They want to win. They're in this to win. They've been in from the very beginning of the NFL franchise back in the 20s to win it. It does make good copy, though, doesn't it? It does. Something to talk about. We'll be right back. The Toyota Halftime Report has been brought to you by your Toyota dealers and their quality line of cars and trucks. Toyota, I love what you do for me. We'll return with the second half kickoff after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Part of the crowd of about 45,000 looking on at Rich Stadium, Orchard Park, New York on a very pleasant August evening. Bills and the Giants opening up their preseason schedule. Regular season beginning the weekend of September 9th and 10th this year. And our regular season opener on Monday Night Football is a beauty as the San Francisco 49ers go to New Orleans to take on the Saints. We open in New Orleans and we close in New Orleans. With party hats on with New a, Year's Eve. With a doubleheader. What, we, we finish uh, the Monday Night season on New Year's Eve and then we just... Stay put because the next night's the Sugar Bowl. We don't uh, well, actually close January 27th. <laughs> nice of them. Well, that's the postseason, but and we have a dramatic impact on the postseason this yeah. year. Yeah, Super Bowl 25 and Dallas a couple Hampton. of wild cards. That's new stuff. All right, Frank, make something out of this. Well, as you can see, uh, time of possession, the dramatic difference there. <laughs> Rodney Hampton is the difference. Yes, there. Rodney Hampton. 155 yards on the ground for the New York Giants and what 89 on that one run would have been what the third longest run in Giants history had it been in the regular season Bills kick to the Giants and here is Hampton let's see what he can do on a run back and he takes it out to the 29 yard line and the Giants will set up shop at that spot as we begin the third quarter and I was talking to George Young uh, at halftime just before we went on the air I said can he indeed go outside? He said, yes, he can go outside. And he, big smile on his face. He said, I don't know why anyone ever questioned our taking him number one. Jeff Hostetler, the Giants' number two quarterback on the depth chart, and third in the game tonight. And before it's done, we'll probably take a look at rookie Cray Cup. And we'll also get our first peek at Otis Anderson. As he's in the backfield as the sole running back in this set. Fake to Anderson. Hostetler flushed out and throws on the run, and it's incomplete. As he tried to get it to Bob Morosco, the plan B tight end from the Oilers. Hostetler will do that. He'll pull that thing down and run with it. He'll get to the outside, very quick feet, and just an all-around good athlete. Bill Parcells, and we touched on it in the first half, talking about trying to get Hostetler more playing time this year. That's the, that's the kind of thing that's real easy to say in preseason. You keep his spirits up, if nothing else. It's a little more difficult, though, to manifest during the regular year if Sims doesn't get hurt. And that's made difficult because of the type of player that Phil Sims is. I mean, I think that that, uh, the competitiveness that we saw earlier tonight in the first quarter when he runs, that's contagious. This football team lives and breathes along with Phil Sims. Second and 10. To the sideline, Lionel Manuel makes the catch before stepping out of bounds near the 40. That's a good point, Dan. Phil Sims steps into a huddle and 
particularly younger players, he just steps in there knowing that he's going to win, knowing he's going to get the completion. He may ask him for a second or two, and he may put it that way. I need a little time. Give me just a little time on this one. And, and it's infectious, and it just carries through the entire ball club. I think that some quarterbacks are are merely the guy who's in there and pulls the strings. He, he runs the play that the coach calls. He's merely there to execute. Uh, Phil Sims, I think, is much more than that. Third and one with Anderson and Carson, the running back. And this is Carson taking it out to the 45-yard line. Anything but a spectacular player is Carson, but he does so many of the things that helps you win football games. And thus, even though his stats aren't eye-popping by any uh, degree of your imagination. He does the things that Parcell says makes him my secret weapon. Well, one of the fine lead blockers mm -hmm. in all the NFL. You know, one time when he was playing for the Generals, New Jersey, and Herschel Walker had an ankle problem, he had a 1,000 yards rushing season. But you're right, he just came in on Friday. I was there when he came into the Giants camp, and he came in lean and mean and good shape, and Parcells goes with him right away with only one workout. First and 10, Giants from the 45-yard line. Anderson out to the 49-yard line. Anderson last year, when people thought he was washed up over 1,000 yards, he went four years between 1,000-yard seasons. How unusual is that? Well, it's only been done one other time in history. Mike Garrett did it with a five-year span between 1,000-yard seasons. The first time he did it, he was with Kansas City, and the second time he did it, he was with San Diego. Like a good car. He went a lot of years with no mileage. Second and six. And it's Carson. I want to add a little something, down. a little something, guys, to that Otis Anderson story. What's unique about it, I think, is how often do you find someone who was truly a superstar? And Otis Anderson with the St. Louis Cardinals was a superstar. I mean, this man is etched into the NFL record, record books with his total yardage. How many players like that have an ego that allows them to become a role player? In many instances, a cheerleader. I mean, Otis Anderson was, was cheerleading for Joe Morris and patiently waited his turn. Now, you have to wonder how many of the really, really good ones are capable of doing that. He was being protected for two years in a row. And that's a good point in as much as that may make the difference in keeping Anderson or Morris at the 41-yard line. Here's Anderson. Stop for no gain. The difference is not that Morris has the bigger ego or what have you, but it's quite possible and probably, I, I, I think probable is the better word to use, that Anderson could adapt to a backup role if he had to better than Morris could at this point. Another thing, too, Anderson is a good receiver, still remains a good receiver. He was a great receiver with the Cardinals, and he can still get out in the flat and catch the ball. He can circle over the middle, and this is something Joe is never in there for. He's not a blocker, Joe Morris. He's not a receiver, so... He is handling all of this very well, Joe Morris, but it's going to be very tough for him to stay with his team. But I'm sure he can't convince himself he's ready to be a backup player at this point. Second and ten, and a nice catch is made by Manuel. Reaching out to pull it in, tackled at the 20-yard line by James Williams, the number one draft choice of the Bills out of Fresno State. Oh, and I'll tell you, he had good position on Manuel. That ball was well thrown and well caught. Now here comes Williams, the number one pick. Played it well. Got a little juke to the outside by Manuel. That was the difference. It gave Manuel about a yard as he froze him with that little quick move to the outside. But he never looked back at the quarterback. Talking about James Williams, he never once turned to look back at the quarterback. A cornerback has to find out what's happening with the football. Carson gets three. He takes it to the 17. Giants on the move here in the third quarter. They lead 7-3 to three with 10.35 to go in the third quarter. Overlooked on their reception, Emmanuel was a well-thrown ball by Hofstetler. Well, there's no competition for the number two quarterback position in New York. I mean, Jeff Hofstetler is clearly the guy. He's earned the respect and the trust of Bill Parcells over the years. A lot of first-line guys still up front for New York. There's Craig Cup. He's the man that we anticipate seeing in the fourth quarter. Fifth-round draft choice at a Pacific Lutheran. Father was a good player, Jake Cup. Second and eight, going for the end zone, and Anderson should have had it. Dropped it in the end zone, so there went six points. Well thrown again by Hofstetler. It was low. That's a difficult catch in between defenders, but one I know Anderson feels he should have caught, but it's where Hofstetler had to put it because Anderson was well covered. Boy, and a, a pattern down the field by Otis Anderson. Again, though, a, a, just a perfect throw by Hofstetler and a catch that 
Otis Anderson more often than not will make, but uh, down the field by Otis Anderson. No simple flare pattern, not just getting out and being a relief valve. That's a designated down the field pattern being run by an aged running back. Uh, the guy's still got some football left. Shotgun third and eight with four wideouts plus Meggett. Hostetler shows his mobility, but that's not enough as he's surrounded by three Bills and taken down. Yeah, but again, Al, he also didn't throw it away, didn't get the interception, and stayed in field goal range. And speaking of field goal, we get to see Raul Alegre's competition. Raul is in, uh, quite frankly, Bill Parcells' doghouse. A lot of injuries a year ago, trouble again as we watch Hostetler. Now, uh, maybe early in his career, Ostetter might have thrown that away, but he was smart enough to realize, I'm going to keep it in here. We might get three out of it. Here's Stover, who hit the goal post on his first effort, and he boots this one through, and he has shown us a lot of leg. That'll get uh, Allegra's leg well quickly also. It will. That's a 44-yard field goal. And into the net. Plenty. 44 Five yards points. into the net, Al. Raul getting well in a hurry. <laughs> I'm ready, coach. Send me up. <laughs> if Matt Stover puts this one into the end zone, Allegri is going to put his pants on to go with the jersey. Yeah. Yeah. Drop his heart chapter in marks, and you'll see some giant pants on him. Raul was awful comfortable before that one went through. Stover's kickoff will come down around the goal line, taking it to one by Edwards. Straight up the middle to the 21. Raul, by the way, is very effective when he's healthy. He had problems last year, and uh, the Giants have been troubled over the years. They've had more kickers in than you can count. We finally settled on Allegra, and all of a sudden he had multiple problems a year ago, and Paul growing the principal one. Well, as a coach, you have to deal on a daily basis with your everyday players getting hurt. Uh, the one guy you count on to stay healthy and really don't invest a lot of time worrying about contingency plans is your kicker. I mean, you just don't see it very often. Frank Reich at the 22-yard line. And it's our first look at Eddie Fuller. And a nice-looking move by Fuller as he takes it out to the 32-yard line. He's a rookie out of LSU fighting for a job in the backfield. He's saluted by this crowd here in Buffalo. Picked in the fourth round by Bill Polian, the Bills' outstanding general manager. Some wholesale changes going on as a lot of young people that we don't know, you might, that are trying to earn jobs tonight. By the way, I didn't want that graphic to go by without a mention. We showed you Frank Reich, the second quarterback picked in 1985 to show you how highly touted he was. They're going to measure here. The, the only quarterback picked ahead of him in that 85 draft was Randall Cunningham. Well, there was one other quarterback taken that year, and of course that was in the supplemental draft, and that was Bernie Kosar that went to the Browns. Him coming out after his junior yeah. year when it was unusual to do yeah. so. The better story is to leave that out, though, isn't it? Yeah. Considering what Bernie has done. Well, and interesting, interestingly enough, didn't Buffalo hold the first choice in that supplemental draft? Mm -hmm. And it was a deal right. worked out between Buffalo and Cleveland. I guess Buffalo was secure. They already had Frank Reich. Uh, why did they need Bernie Kozak? Well, it was an interesting draft for Buffalo when you go back to 1985. And again, we take a look at the rookie Fuller. They didn't know at that point that they would get Kelly because Kelly was playing in the right. USFL. He had drafted Kelly, you'll recall. So when they go out and draft Reich, it's with the intention of making him their number one quarterback eventually. Right. Just didn't work out that way because Kelly, uh, with the folding of the USFL, then comes back to the Bills. He followed Boomer Sias in Maryland, right? And Boomer yes. sent him a congratulatory right. telegram after his win a year ago against the Rams up here when Kelly was out with the separated shoulder. Talking about that run and shoot, take it another step. Jack Pardee is back in the NFL now down with the Houston Oilers. USFL coach, former NFL coach, University of Houston coach, and he's back in the league. Right on second and eight. Oh. Goes back the other way and throws a floater. Should have fair caught that. Intercepted <laughs> by Howard Beggins. <laughs> And a plan B free agent acquisition by the Giants takes it all the way down to the 22. Oh, that was a terrible pass. Huh? No, it's hard to believe of, of Reich. I mean, we, I mean, he won three games for the Bills near a year ago. He just threw that up for grabs. There's no way that a Bills receiver was even in the area. Suffice it to say that this is not a blue darter. This is not a frozen rope or any other cliche you want to throw in there. Clearly, this was a case where it could have been fair caught. 
or the infield fly rule could have been in effect. Talked about the Giants and their three plan B acquisitions. Pickens was one of them. Trying to win a spot in the secondary. And then he runs it back to the 23-yard line. First and 10. New York Giants lead 10-3. Seven and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. There's movement in the line, as you saw on the left side. Flags are down. And Anderson is down at the 25-yard line. That Illegal was motion. Bob Morasco, the tight end. An acquisition from the Houston Oilers. A guy who got a lot of playing time with Houston last year. Morasco and Bill Parcells, pleased to have him in Illegal camp. Motion. Number 80 offense, penalty decline, second down. We were talking about that run and shoot in Houston, and that, of course, is one reason that Morasco said, hey, what am I going to do here? Not, not a lot of opportunities for the tight end in the run and shoot. Well, especially a tight end at 6'5 and 270. He played well for Houston on occasion down there, and Marcel's was surprised he was able to get him. And when you consider what's going on in the case of Mark Bavaro, he is, if nothing else, certainly good insurance and could be the starter there if Howard Cross doesn't work out. On second and 13. Hostetler out of the pocket and taken down at the 29-yard line with emphasis by Daryl Marshall. Another USC product, about 305 pounds of him. Here comes Marshall, free agent. Frank, how long ago was it where, when you mentioned a player and in the same breath mentioned his weight and it began with a three, I mean, you stopped to talk about it. I know. You wonder where you weigh them. The scales go up to, what, three? You got to go to the ice plant or something like that? <laughs> well, I think they've modernized a bit. But still, I mean, uh, the number of players on each team over 300 pounds is staggering. On third and seven, the pass yeah, is oh caught boy. for a first down by Ingram, and he takes it down to the five-yard line. Oh, that's a Mark sensational Ingram. pass. And Mark Ingram, who was developing into... Perhaps the Giants' best receiver at the end of last season with a good move after he comes down with the ball. Now, there's a Giants' number one draft pick that they've been kind of waiting for him to happen. And they can, kind of hope that it's going to be this year. An excellent delivery, though, by Hostetler, rolling to his right out of the shotgun and really throwing it uh, off balance and back across his shoulder, back upfield. That's, that's just a fine pass by Hostetler. We talked away about the way Sims will fire up the team. Hostetler would do it, too, because... You miss a block as an offensive lineman, you think, oh, there goes the quarterback, and you turn around. He's rolled out and gotten free and gets the completion, and you feel good about that. First and goal from the five. Off the play fake to Anderson. Hostetler on a roll, looking for the end zone and in for the touchdown. There's a flag. There's a flag down. You saw the official bend over and pick it up. I think he might have thought it was going to be a pass. And it could have been offensive pass interference, defensive pass interference, and when they ran, it didn't matter. Holding, mm -hmm. 57 on the defense, friendly decline, touchdown. Hostetler, remember last year when he had to go against Phoenix? He ran for two touchdowns and a win against them. When well, it's what Central really Church. brought Bill Parcells to the point, talking about trying to get Jeff Hostetler some playing time, is that Phil Simms is not a mobile quarterback, that Hostetler brings that, that new and mobile dimension to the offense when he's in there. And that's why Parcell says, I've got to find a way during certain situations in a game to get Hostetler on the field. Extra point is good by Stover and the Giants with 5.49 to go in the third. Lead by 14. Giants on top after a uh, short scoring drive with 5.49 to play in the third quarter. New York on top, 17-3. To and here's Matt Stover, the rookie. Sending it to the six, Eddie Fuller. Past the 30, a flag is down, and Fuller takes it to the 38-yard line where Fagans makes the tackle. Marker down, though, back at the 31. There is a flag on the field. And back it will come, as it normally does when you see a flag on the run back. Looks like Gail Gilbert is making his way in. Rolling. 
number 89, receiving team during the return. 10 yard penalty, first and 10. Frank Reich ends up leaving the game, Al, on a real sour note. Mm -hmm. Very. So Gail Gilbert, the number three quarterback for the Bills, will take over back at the 21 yard line. A look there at the penalty, and we'll be back in a moment. Back in Buffalo, Al Michaels, Frank Ifford, Dan Deerdorf. We have 5.35 to go in the third quarter. The Giants lead the Bills 17-3, and Gail Gilbert, the number three Buffalo quarterback, comes in after Reich winds up the night four for 12 with two interceptions. Eddie Fuller, the LSU rookie. Funny thing about Gail Gilbert, here's a guy who was really number two last year in preseason, but he was injured. That gave Reich the opportunity to become number two, and he cemented that with his performance during the regular season. Broke some ribs against New Orleans in preseason, and when we came up to do the Ram game and you were doing the World Series, Al, it was questionable whether they were going to go with Gilbert or Reich, and of course Reich became a hero that night and went on to win three games, and, and Gilbert was left out in the cold looking for a job. Second and five at the 26-yard line. Fumble picked up by Gilbert. He's tackled at the 23. For Gilbert, it's a comeback uh, again this year from a lot of adversity. He was a backup quarterback at Seattle when he was hurt in 87 and spent the whole season on injured reserve. Then he was involved in a long personal court battle in 88, and that cost him that season, and hurt again last year. So, in effect, he hasn't played since 1986. Second all-time leading passer at the University of California, so he's got some talent. And I'll tell you, many of Bills will tell you that he has the strongest arm of any of the quarterbacks here. Third and seven from the 24-yard line. Gilbert with a little too strong an arm. And it will be fourth down. The intended receiver was Eric Starr. And the Bills will have to punt. Abrams covering. Looks funny to see a linebacker for oh, the New York Giants the wearing number 53. You see Abrams, the Michigan player there wearing it. And of course, I look at that and I think Harry Carson. And he wore it for what, 13 years? Whoa. I just, that's, you, you take notice and pay attention when that white jersey with that blue 53 came flashing by. You, you didn't let that one get out of sight. John Neese, the Arizona rookie. Fielded on the run and fumbled at the 43-yard line by Mark Ingram. But he's able to maintain possession, and the Giants will take over at midfield. 4-16 to go in the third. 17-3, Giants. Uh, Jamie Mueller's hairdresser goes around saying, if you don't look good, we don't look good. Shades of John Riggins a long time ago. Jamie Mueller. <laughs> he lost 17 pounds, two of them on his scalp. <laughs> From the 50-yard line, Lewis Tillman takes off for the Giants inside the 40 and a run out of bounds at the 31. Oh, what a collision on the sideline. What a collision on the sideline. And we've got a Bill player that is still not up. That's number 22, I believe. That's John Hagee. Let's watch it on regular speed. There's Hagee right there by the upright, number 22. Follow him all the way across the field. Tillman just dropped the shoulder, and it was shoulder on shoulder, and Ooh. Tillman is one strong runner. When he came up last year as a fourth-round draft pick, this is what earned him a spot in the ball club. He came up here and played against Buffalo with runs like this. Strictly power. He's not a nifty runner, but he will take you on. Oh, and it's a great hit by Hagee, too. I mean, Hagee came over and delivered a blow. Now, that's that's a position a lot of times a running back will find himself in, like Tillman did there, and just step out of bounds. You know, he'll reduce the, you know, the severity of the hit by stepping out of bounds, but that never even crossed Tillman's mind. Get the impression that Tillman, he, he looks for somebody to hit. And you saw Hagee get up, so good news there. Right on the left shoulder. That also could have been helmet for helmet, too, and it, it gets rather noisy when they collide like that. 20-yard gain, ball at the 30-yard line. Giants, first and 10 on top, 17-3. to 
Here's Tillman behind Carson, swings to the outside. Picks up seven. And James Williams makes the tackle. Update some baseball scores for you. A couple of big games in the American League tonight. One of them at Chicago where Toronto and the White Sox are tied 1-1 in the sixth. The other game hasn't started yet. Boston at Oakland. Boston leading by three in the east. Oakland by five in the west. And the big game in the National League West. Cincinnati leads San Francisco 6-4 in the seventh inning. A Reds win would give them three out of four in that series. And a six and a half game lead in the National League West. Tillman slices his way inside the 20. We've got a flag on what would have been a first down normally. However, it will come back. Holding against the Giants. In a way, this game reflects the... 68 offense, 10 yards, repeat second down. Kenneth Vines. It, it, in a way, it sort of reflects the way the coaches feel about preseason to a, a certain degree. Bill Parcells in his years with the Giants is 23 and 6 in preseason. Marv Levy in his years with Buffalo is 3 and 10. I don't know the conclusions you can draw from those because these are both teams that know how to win and I don't know that having a losing preseason really has any lasting scars on into the regular season. Yeah, this will not be memorable for more than five minutes. Nope. Tillman to the 32 yard line. I, I, you know but you're right Al everyone has different philosophies. You go back to Bud Grant. Bud Grant brought his team into training camp as late as possible but then played his veterans virtually the entire preseason. They uh, they didn't leave it on the practice field. He believed in letting his veterans play the entire preseason games. So he had a tremendous record as a as a coach in the preseason. So it's, it's just a matter of style and what you're looking for. Marv Levy answered that question has answered it several times. So yeah, I care about winning, but not at the expense of the regular season. I know one thing, though, with an 80 man roster, the lines are a whole lot shorter during training camp, but every team now has less contact than they used to. On third and 12, Hostetler goes deep and drops on what would have been a touchdown pass to Odessa Turner. So Hostetler has had the misfortune of having two would be touchdown passes dropped one by Anderson and now one by Turner. Beautifully thrown, and Odessa Turner did everything you expect him to do except catch the football. He has tremendous speed. He's a great athlete, and he has the height. He's six foot three, perfect spiral, right off the fingertips. Beautifully thrown. Now Matt Stover, the rookie, trying to kick a 49-yard field goal, and this one is good, and I think Raul Allegre has just booked passage to Lourdes. <laughs> Raul. Non-stop. I mean, it's a helpless feeling for Allegre because I know that he would like to get in right now and show that he's capable of kicking one that far. But Allegre out with an injury, and boy, that's yeah. I, I'm sure that he has a bit of an upset stomach right he now. He was kicking a little over a week ago on a rainy day or a very damp day, and he said the ball was heavy and he kicked too much and he felt a, a strain growing, not a pull growing, but he's. Decided to take off some time, and that might be the most expensive time he ever took off. If a look is worth a thousand words, in meeting with Bill Parcells yesterday, uh, and he told us of his plans to let Stover kick the entire game, I said, Hey, has uh, this kid got a shot? And he just raised his eyebrows in that, You better believe he's got a shot look. Stover, a rookie out of Louisiana Tech, hasn't reached the end zone on any of the kickoffs, but he hangs it up there and gets a lot of time for the coverage team. Put that one down to the two yard line, and Eddie Fuller brings it back out to the 27. And so Gail Gilbert comes out to engineer his second series from the 27 yard line. 147 to go in the third quarter, and if this game seems to be rapidly played, you are right. They've changed the rules this year. The clock starts. Here's a, an example here. Right after the run back, last year the clock would not have started until the snap. Now it starts when the ball is ready for play. And it will start when it's ready for play after a runner or a pass receiver goes out of bounds this year. So the games will be played a lot quicker. Exception, of course, the final two minutes of the first half, the final five of the game. 
Fuller makes the catch, seeks the first down, has it, and a lot more as he takes it to the 49-yard line. Well, here's going to be another example right here. Uh, we saw it after a kickoff. Here is where a reception is made. Uh, the play goes out of bounds. The officials right now will set the ball, and they will wind the clock. Again, right there. There goes referee Gordon McCarter. He starts the clock right there. You see him wind the hands. That's the situation again, as Al said. It would not start until the snap of the ball, but the game clock there in the mm -hmm. lower right is running. Whoa. Right. In fact, it's running so fast. It's <laughs> right, right, right out of the picture. Picture. Two things are happening. The games are finishing under three hours, well into three hours, and they are getting fewer plays in the game. From the 49, here's a screen to Fuller. Has to fight off his own man and takes it to the 45. Eddie Fuller turning in a, a pretty good performance tonight as this rookie tries to win a spot as a reserve running back. Bills have it at the 45 with under a minute now to play in the third quarter. Second down, call it uh, five at the 46 yard line. That's Mueller in motion. Fuller with the ball at the short side of the field and not much there. And he stayed in bounds, so that will take care of the quarter. So this game, uh, just a little bit more than two hours old, and we played three quarters last year. The average time of a game in the National Football League, three hours and 11 minutes, and they want to get it down under three and 90. They'll succeed. Back we come after this word from our ABC stations. We start the fourth quarter at Rich Stadium. Al Michaels, Frank Gifford, and Dan Deardorff. Giants have the ball, and a seven, or the Bills have the football. The Giants have the lead by 17. It's third down and two for Buffalo. And out of the shotgun on an inside handoff, it's Eric Starr who gets wrapped up and taken down by David Whitmore, wearing the old number of Terry Kennard, who opted to leave under the Plan B free agency situation. And Buffalo will have to kick. Whitmore, rookie out of Stephen F. Austin College. Again, the numbers just reflecting the dominance by the Giants, almost 300 yards in offense. And look at that, over 200 yards rushing, 210. I think Bill Parcells doesn't love that. Well, he's pleased with the way his offensive line is played. Well, it was fourth down and four, and the Giants uh, had to take a timeout because the Bills lined up to go for it when the Giants thought initially they were going to punt. And when they saw that the Bills had lined up in the shotgun, the defense called a timeout. 14 seconds into the fourth quarter. 20 to three. Jets. 14.46 to play in the fourth quarter. New York Giants leading the Buffalo Bills 20 to three. And Buffalo with a fourth and four at the giant 45-yard line. What the heck? They're going for it. Marv Levy behind him is Ted Marchabrota. He's the offensive coordinator. Guaranteed during the regular season, this score, this situation, he would not be going for it. <laughs> They're trying to draw, draw the, the Giants offside, but the Glenn Parker instead will get whistled here. Well, he's a rookie. Well started. 74 offense. He's had to play virtually the entire game there at left tackle, and it's, it's been a night, I'm sure, that Glenn Parker, from the mistake standpoint here with a couple of false starts during the course of the game, would like to forget, but really, he's played pretty well. His pass protection has been solid. His technique has been pretty good. I don't, uh, I don't think Glenn Parker ought to be discouraged. Good move by Johnny Cook. He gave him a nod of the head, and Parker bit it all the way. John Neese's kick is a floater. There's a flag down and a catch made at the 18 by Mark Ingram. Flag was uh, thrown when the ball was airborne. Flag. Go, go. Gordon McCarter checking with his side judge, 
to Creed. Holding number 31, receiving team during the kick. Half the distance penalty, first and 10. Tracy Gravely, a rookie from Concord College. Here's the guilty individual. Puts him back at the nine yard line. Reminder, a week from tonight, Mile High Stadium is the site. Again, it's an eight o'clock Eastern, five o'clock Pacific game, 49ers and the Broncos. And then two weeks from tonight, we will be at the Hoosier Dome in Indianapolis, where the Colts will take on the Philadelphia Eagles, our regular season opener, September 10th from the Superdome, the world champion 49ers and the New Orleans Saints. Giants back at the nine yard line on first and 10. Concept with the quarterback. Turns and hands it off to Aaron Emanuel who takes it up to the 13. Giants are hoping that Emanuel will do some of the things that he never quite got to do at USC. He was highly heralded when he came in but he had a lot of trouble and never really got on track. And uh, he's got a lot of talent. There's no question about it. And there's a spot to be won for him with an impressive preseason. Big 6'2", 225 pounds. I'm sure you recall now when he was being recruited throughout every school in the country. Uh, Palmdale, California. Great high school mm -hmm. career. And he got into an off-the-field altercation at SC, and that cost him some time. And Giants are taking a chance with him. On second and six, here's Emmanuel, and this is one of the reasons they're going to take a good look at him. And he takes it out to the 34-yard line. I think uh, Emmanuel's lost uh, a letter off of his name as well. Hampton uh, ran out of some of his letters. Yeah, we have a missing N in the middle. Rodney, Rodney Hampton missed the P in the middle of his. It's time for the uh, giant equipment man to go back to the glue factory. And I'll tell you, if you're rookie, that, that's, they don't stick those rookies' letters on there too tight, do they? It really is a little discouraging <laughs> to be a rookie. You turn around and half your name's gone. You might have to get a little super glue, though, for these two guys. They mm -hmm. may... Hampton, uh, I'd say he's a safe bet to make the team. Emmanuel, not such a sure thing, but pretty solid so far. We know Tillman's going to be there. You know that definitely that Megan will be around. We can start counting numbers easily. Here's Tillman. Hampton the 38 for a gain of four. Hampton, of course, will be there. Tillman, or rather, uh, Megan does give Parcells, as I said earlier, a little bit of a luxury because he can be be kept on ready as a wide receiver. You know, one thing in defense of the Buffalo Bills here tonight, the New York Giants are playing more of their front line people up front for a longer period of time in this game. And I'm sure the Marv Levy knows that. But when you look out there now, I see John Elliott still at left tackle for the Giants. Uh, Eric Moore uh, is still in the ball game. And then their backups yeah. are far superior to the Bills, yeah. too. Eric Moore has moved out to right tackle. Brian Williams, who could be a starter, is in there now, left guard. There's Williams pulling 59. And Tillman turning the corner, seeking the first down, and might have it. Out of bounds uh, with Dwight Drain making the tackle. If there are two places that the New York Giants are really strong, it's at the running back position and the wide receiver position. If there are two places where they are untested and thin and one of them is certainly on the defensive line and uh, you have to wonder if some point in time in this preseason uh, pre Bill Parcells isn't going to have to deal a running back or a wide receiver to find try to find a defensive lineman and of course a tight end is another story if Mark Bavaro isn't able to go Leonard Marshall of course still has not come into camp the defensive end former pro bowler I think the perfect description for the Giants running backs and wide receivers would be deep. They're very deep in very. both positions. I think what Parcells would like to see is he'd like to see sooner or later an explosive running back. And certainly he has high hopes for Hampton in that regard. And one of the wide receivers to really assert himself, be it Turner or Ingram, you pretty much know what you're going to get with Lionel Manuel. And there oh, it is, the only team yeah. in the league whose leading receiver caught less than 40 passes last year. That was Turner with 38. The only team in there. Mm -hmm. Turner would figure to be the one who can take it deep. But all in all, it just is not in the giant scheme of things with Bill Parcells. They are a ball control team, and they 
that built a tremendous offensive line to move behind. As you look at Turner, he's got the speed, a superb athlete, 6'3", 205 pounds. And he did lead the Giants in receiving, but what they would like to do is to be able to control the ball on the ground, go with play action when they need to, and that's what they've been successful with, and that's what they're going to try and do again. The question mark, Dan, is you said, and you said all along, is that tight end? He is key to the Giants' plan for the running game. Second and seven, and here's Tillman, and he gets tripped up. That's a nice tackle made by number 52, Wes Pritchett. Knifing through to get a, a hand on his ankle and stop him at the line of scrimmage. Pritchard made a nice stop there. He's probably thinking back that missed tackle on Rodney Hampton that Hampton went 89 yards on. You have to think that Thunderbolts would have to strike for Rodney Hampton not to be the starting running back uh, when the season gets underway for the New York Giants. Uh, that's an explosiveness that the Giants have been lacking for a long time. And, um, it's going to be interesting. I mean, there's no way I see it that this guy isn't going to beat us. And when Parcells gets one, he likes, he'll run him. He'll run him 25, 30 times a game. Hostetler sets up on third and seven, and the pass is incomplete. Running an out pattern and not getting to the ball is Michael Riddick, a rookie out of Delaware State. So it's fourth down. Does Joe Morris have any trade value? Funny thing about Morris is the Giants left him unprotected as a plan B free agent and nobody nibbled and Joe's a little bitter about it too feeling that the Giants bad mouthed him to other clubs around the league. That answers the question although keep in mind when he was dangled as a plan B he hadn't played any yet and there were still question marks as to how the foot had healed. If Joe Morris is able to have a productive preseason does he then have some trade value. I don't know the Giants may test the waters before it's over. Landetta's kick puts Buffalo at the 20. Richard Park, New York, with 10-10 to play. The Giants tonight averaging 7.8 on the ground. And even if you throw out that 89-yard run by Rodney Hampton, they're still averaging 5.1. That's for what it's worth, and I don't know what anything is worth in preseason. Gilbert going deep. And a great catch is made by Lou Barnes. He dropped one earlier and atones for that with a beauty on a play that nets 48 yards for Buffalo. Barnes only 5'8 and 170 pounds. And that ball from Gilbert, who has a strong arm, didn't quite get there. And he came back and made a good play on it. And coverage provided on the Giants by Figgins. That's yeah. just good timing by Barnes. That's just a veteran judging the right moment to leave the ground and go up for the ball. Takes 5'8 and makes about 6'10 yep. out of it. Well, when you're only 5'8, you learn how to time your jumps. You don't have anything to spare. From the 31 yard line, Gilbert. Here's Barnes again, and the much traveled one takes it to the 24. Barnes spent two years with the Bears, one year with Atlanta. One year with Kansas City, and now he's been shuffled off to Buffalo. When he first came up with the Bears, I thought that uh, he was going to be their lead return guy. Had a couple of big returns early on in his stay in Chicago and showed an explosiveness. But again, the Bears very deep in running backs, wide receivers, and return people as well. And thus, Lou Barnes had to move on. Second and two. And Gilbert has his receiver fall down. John Kolasar was right there, and the pass was right there, but he's another victim of the slick turf at Rich Stadium. Saw a quick flash at number 55 for the Giants. That's Gary Reasons until a couple of days ago. He also was not in camp. There's Reasons. Remembering back to the Denver game of a year ago, that goal line saving tackle of his. Virtually responsible for that win. Good hard nose inside linebacker. Made that tackle uh, against Bobby Humphrey in Denver. On third and short, catch is made, and I believe contact was made also. Al Edwards makes the catch and picks up a first down. 
And Edwards was down initially. They'll put it back to the 18-yard line. Al Edwards. Again, as far as the Bills are concerned, when you look at Barnes and Edwards, there are a couple of guys trying to win jobs because you've got Reed and Lofton and Don Beebe. And they'll be one, two, three. They've got John Colazar as well, a player that was hurt on the very first practice of training camp last year. Back trying to make the team this year, but Colasar no factor here tonight. Catch is made by Eric Starr with a nice little spin move to the outside. He takes it inside the five to make it first and goal. And so we're leaving out Thurman Thomas, who had 60 receptions for these Bills last year. They often line him up to the outside, and here's the delivery by Gilbert. Starr with a good, quick look to the inside. And springs it open on the outside. So the Bills, with their best drive of the night, have taken it to the three-yard line. It's first and goal with seven and a half minutes to go. Fourth quarter, 20 to three, Giants. And Gilbert throws, and it's nearly intercepted. Al Edwards, the intended receiver, and Renee Thompson coming in to get a hand on it. Thompson, a great special teamer, and a guy seeing more action than he normally would tonight in the absence of Mark Collins. And that's a good example of both players have a right to the football. Renee Thompson moving forward with his eyes on the ball, and even though there's contact, both players allowed to bump each other as long as they're moving towards the ball, making a play on the ball. Second and goal off the quick count, a little swing pass. Caught by Sean Doctor, and that's a loss of a couple as he's tackled at the six. Doctor out of Marshall University in Huntington, West Virginia, and a kid who grew up in the Buffalo area, seeing his first action of the night. Third and goal. Good, Good play by Johnny oh, Cook yeah. there. Yeah, Excellent. Frank. That's the way uh, a defense rotates, and one guy covers for another. The blitz game, Cooks rotates to the outside and makes the tackle. Cooks has been around nine years, but again, he was number one draft pick for the Colts. Played there for many years, and came to the Giants a couple of years ago, but he can play inside or outside and offers you a lot of versatility on your roster. Third and goal from the six. And Gilbert gets dumped at the 10. So from first and goal at the three, they go to fourth and goal at the 10. Much to his pleasure and his chagrin. <laughs> and Marv Levy is going to kick a field goal, and you don't need me to tell you the response of the Buffalo crowd. Well, you're down by 17. Sooner or later, you need a field goal, but uh, the crowd would much prefer it be later. Yeah. I think it, and realistically, you may as well get a little scrimmage with your field goal unit. All things that you can work on in preseason games, or you, you might work on a fake field goal as well. This is really, though, just a Buffalo chip shot. Kerry Brady. <laughs> it is. <laughs> yes, it is. I like that. Chippy little summation. Brady boosts it through, and it's 20 to 6. 5.53 to go. DB in uh, the t shirt. Emerging wide receiver, but uh, slightly injured. Represents the speed of the outside receivers for the Bills. Although I think Andre Reed, who's not playing tonight, uh, he's got a lot more speed than people think that that he has. Well, you saw BB talking to James Lofton, the two fastest Buffalo Bills, and you hear lofty numbers like 427, 428 being tossed around for Don BB in the 40. That's remarkable speed. Meeks kicks it into the end zone for the touchback. Highlight of the night, real simple. One play, go back to the first time. Rodney Hampton touches the ball as a member of the New York Giants, and he makes it a memorable experience. And well, touched on it. He played behind that first string offensive line, and there was only one possible shot at him that could have taken him down by Hagee. And then he shows also the good speed he has, which is somewhere around 4-6. Yeah, they got a good one. Not a bad way to get it started. Here's Craig Cup now, the fifth round draft choice out of Pacific Lutheran in the state of Washington. 
Yeah, and this is Emmanuel, and Emmanuel picks up a first down and about seven yards more. A gain of 17 after the 37-yard line as Aaron Emanuel is having himself a, a very nice second half. He's got a couple of things there as Emanuel. He, he showed the hole well. He stepped to the outside. A lot of agility there, and then he accelerated. That's that's what you want. He's the one thing, though, Frank. I noticed about him, and I'd love your input here. Uh, Emanuel runs real straight up and very down. Very upright. Yeah, he's. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how he takes shots once we start playing for real running in that real upright stance a lot of your midsections exposed and of course so is the ball and there is a quick start it's like William Doyen number 71 was the perpetrator it's one way to get your name mentioned it's about the only way for an offensive lineman a rookie over hits Craig Cup, by the way, 6'4", 215 pounds, very strong arm. Uh, having a little bit of a problem with the Giants when they signal their plays in. He's been working long and hard with Phil Sims to get that down, but if you don't get that down, you're not going to be in there. First and 10 from the 32. And here's Hampton. You saw a flag thrown, and he takes it out to the 39-yard line. I see they got half of Hampton's P back on there. <laughs> the Giants in a state of disrepair here. <laughs> There's. Looks like last year's yeah, P. Boris is missing one too here. Yeah. We got. Uh, we are. We're, we're just going to pieces hey, here. Hey, number 71 offense, 10 yards, repeat first time. You know, you should have asked George Young a probing question about the falling letters here, Frank. This is getting prepared for Lawrence, I guess. I don't care. Maybe they're all being like uh, Kareem, changing their name. Well, that's one way to do it. That was really weak, Al. Really Very. Weak. Well, <laughs> and deservedly so. 20 to 6, the 22 yard line. Emmanuel. Hey, that's good. Huh? Out to the 32-yard line. You know, you look at a lot of backs that make those kind of juking steps in the backfield and they're deep in their own backfield. But this man knew what he was doing. Yeah, the unfortunately, and then the acceleration. Unfortunately, I'm not sure that anyone in a blue jersey does know what they're doing. In front of him. It is a Buffalo defense on the field right now that is uh, performing at a subpar level. Whether it's up to their level or not, I'm not sure, but this is a group here that's not getting to anyone. Second and 15, and here's Emmanuel again with a straight up sound. Oh. Able to break a couple of tackles and take it out to the 39 yard line. Sensational leg strength. Good look at Emmanuel just powering through people, and meanwhile, we got a player down on the field. That's Emmanuel getting up a little slow. And we've got Buffalo calling a timeout. Look at Emmanuel drive right through that breaks that tackle of Munger and keeps on going. Yeah, I'm not sure. Kenny Wolf, our producer, brings up a great point. Uh, is this great news for the Giants and that Emmanuel is uh, maybe more than they bargained for, or is this just not a very good look because it's uh, an ineffective Buffalo defense on the field? They'll continue to look at him, and he'll see probably a lot of action down the road in preseason. For a couple of reasons, we talked about the numbers, and Rodney Hampton's going to be here. We know that Maurice Carthen's going to be here. And Dave Megan, most certainly, Tillman. And it gets into a numbers game, but if you show him off, seventh-round draft pick, but he was projected way back early days of USC as possibly a number one draft pick down the line. It didn't turn out there, and it could be he could be one of the... Giants that might be considered for a trade and they need some help. We talked about it earlier where they need it. Third down and nine and here's Hampton behind Emmanuel swings it to the outside has the first down and takes it to the 42 yard line. Almost identical moves by the part of Hampton and Emmanuel. Just a little chop steps a little stutter step making people miss and then the acceleration. Well, if I know Bill Parcells, he'll go in and tell his team that you didn't play very well tonight and don't expect me to take it easy on you next week during practice. That's just the way it goes during the preseason. Conversely, I would think that Marv Levy and the Buffalo Bills are not going to have a fun week. 
Uh, this has become an embarrassment oh, for the Bills, and I would expect this to be a rather grueling week for the guys in the blue and red. It, it will also be a very short week because they have a game on Friday at Detroit. Couldn't be short enough for some of these players, Al. Here's Emmanuel. I don't care who they're playing against. You're looking no. at some awfully good running on the part of Hampton and Emmanuel. Emmanuel with a move. And Hampton with a move on the play before this one. Was top drawer. Bills go to Detroit on Friday. Giants uh, next see action on Saturday as they go to the Astrodome to take on the Oilers. And looking ahead to the regular season, the Giants open up at home in a big game against Philadelphia, a team that's beaten the Giants four consecutive times over the last two seasons. And Buffalo opens up with division foe Indianapolis here at Orchard Park. Second and three from the 37 yard line. Hampton. I know one thing about Hampton's performance tonight. I think of uh, four guys named uh, Ryan, Gibbs, Bugle, and Johnson that all of a sudden went, oh no. I mean, they might have heard that this kid had some talent. They might have heard that this kid was a little explosive. All of a sudden, those four guys who are the coaches of the Giants NFC East competition, I think, have a whole new perspective on number 27. And when they said it, they weren't talking about the Hawaiian fish. No, they were not. Two minute warning. My dream car was. Two minutes to go at Rich Stadium in Buffalo. The Giants have things in hand. They lead 20 to 6. They have the ball at the Buffalo 36 yard line. Third down and a short three. Craig Cup trying to win a spot as a backup quarterback. Gives the ball to Hampton, who has a guaranteed spot. And he is stopped back at the line of scrimmage and sets up a fourth down situation. And Buffalo will conserve some time here by taking a timeout. Update some news of the day in the NFL. Lewis Cheek of Dallas and John Brandon of Phoenix were suspended by the NFL for <laughs> substance abuse today. And uh, down in New Orleans, Brett Maxey and Toy Cook, the two defensive backs, have ended their holdouts. In the training camp, they go. Don Mikowski uh, continues his feud with Green Bay. He offered as they the, remain uh, well apart. And Deion yeah. Sanders. Uh, Finished with the Yankees and uh, accepts his fine and joins the Falcons full time. He thinks he was offered the possibly. local savings and loan association. Deion Sanders. <laughs> I don't know I if guess. that's good or bad. Yeah. <laughs> I turned it down. Deion Sanders, I guess, missing uh, 18 days of Falcon training camp, uh, a fine upwards of $37,000, I believe. And too many good news, too. I mean, it could be that Danny Reeves will be returning to the Broncos yeah. by. Next Monday night, whether he does or he doesn't, well, all of us are delighted he's doing so well and wish him nothing but the best. Class all the way. What a break to uh, catch that early. Mm -hmm. Some arterial blockage, surgery to rectify the problem, and boy, you get that early, and the prognosis is good. Here's a fourth and two, and Hampton does not have the first down. There is a flag down, however, so he would have the first down if the penalty is against Buffalo. Otherwise, it'll be Buffalo ball. Giants last year was 17 of 22 on fourth down attempts. They like it. Penalty is against the Giants. Bills will decline. Buffalo will take over. And so Bill Parcells, for what it's worth, as we mentioned before, he'll be 24 and 6 in preseason. Holding 71 offense. Penalty declined. First down the other way. That's Bill's new body, by the way. He is way down. Sleek and trim. Conscientiously dieting, much like our uh, colleague. Colleague on the right, I can even fit into my chair now. Oh, what are you weighing now? Down 275, right? That's yeah. Down yeah. from a, one of those numbers we spoke of earlier, <laughs> the lower 300. <laughs> That's about 3.30, I guess. There's a screen pass that's dropped by Eric Starr. Several of the coaches in Dan involved in a uh, campaign to lose some weight. Well, really, the coaches did a neat thing. Uh, they lost it for charity and, and you made about $125,000 for the Miami Project. Uh, Nick Bonacani is the favorite charity because of the plight of his son, Mark. 
Dan's building a new addition in his home. <laughs> Eric Starr oh, takes it out to the 41. Parcells like had a good line, though. Buddy Ryan is one of the coaches losing weight, and he says uh, he's got a new nickname now, Bud Light. <laughs> Pops a plenty here tonight. Yep. Timeout because of the injured Bill. That's Eric Starr. Eric Starr is still down on him and clutching at that right knee. Ooh, you hate to see that. He had looked good, to, good tonight. Hate to see it, period, but he had looked well tonight. At least from what we've seen from a major injury standpoint, tonight's game has been relatively easy on, on both clubs. Next week, Mile High Stadium is the site. 8 o'clock Eastern is the time as the 49ers, uh, who opened their uh, preseason campaign with a loss to the Raiders on Saturday night, will face the Denver Broncos, the two teams who last met in the Superdome uh, in Super Bowl 24 having at it. And then uh, in a couple of weeks, uh, we'll go to Indianapolis. Doesn't figure that Eric Dickerson will be ready by then but uh, the Colts will be tuning up against the Philadelphia Eagles on the 27th two weeks from tonight Eric uh, Dickerson appears to be setting his own timetable he's uh, nursing a hamstring and there you see the the sandwich on Eric Starr hit from the left up high and then down low from the right side and still on the field first year player from North Carolina. Well, this is the first extended injury timeout of the game, and we uh, we've talked a couple of times tonight about how they've done things to speed the game up. And in fact, um, until this extended timeout, we were on a pace to end this thing in about two hours and 45 minutes, which would be considerably under last year's average, as we mentioned before. Three hours and 11 minutes. I think if it continues this way, Paul Tagliabue is going to be the man of the year for the local news stations around the country. Yeah. And at least they didn't feel that a stretcher was required for Star. You see him putting some weight on the leg. It, it looked like he got the right foot off the ground before he took the major hit on the on the low side. So maybe this will be good news for Eric Star. Maybe it uh, maybe he's not that badly hurt. Again, here's a look at it, and watch how Starr gets that foot off the ground, and I mean in the nick of time. In the nick of time, Eric Starr got that knee up off the ground, that right foot, or else that... It all three. happens, as you know, Dan, in a, such oh. a fraction of a second. It's just, just such a lot involved in it. Well, we wish him well. One minute and 24 seconds remaining. And his play resumes now. Buffalo with it at the 41. Third down and four. Dale Gilbert. Throws over the middle and catching it among several giants is Clarkston Hines, a rookie from Duke, who found the open spot. And as a first down at the 35 of New York, a 24-yard pickup. And went right over the middle and caught it, did Hines. Going deep down the sideline and too deep this time. That pass intended for Roy Banks. And it'll be second down and 10. Banks out of Eastern Illinois. We can update a baseball score for you. The Reds beat the Giants tonight at Riverfront 6 to 5. So the Reds uh, hotly pursued by San Francisco take three out of four and stretch the lead to six and a half and seven in the loss column. What have the Reds been? Something like 32 and 35 after that torrid start. Yep. And uh, the Giants have gotten right back in the race, but Cincinnati wins three out of four. Sweet Lou. Second down and 10. <laughs> Gilbert throwing, hoping that anybody is home and nobody is there. 53 seconds to play in the game. Two starting quarterbacks, long gone, of course. Kelly uh, engineering two series. Likewise for Phil Sims. Phil Sims renegotiated his contract a year ago. And third and 10. Polisar, and a fumble at the 25-yard line. And the Giants have it. 
and that will write a climax to this one. And 43 what, seconds. To and go. what few fans are left here at Rich Stadium are on their feet. <laughs> it's out of walking. Here. On their feet and walking. What a disaster this has been for Marv Levy and his Bills. But if you're going to have a disaster on opening night, better in the preseason than on September 9th. And that was John Colasar, the wide receiver that made the catch and begging for some extra yardage. Didn't take care of business. Didn't hold on to the ball. Mike Shepard made the recovery. This doesn't look like the run and shoot here. Oh, that's the old one hand grenade gets everybody <laughs> formation. <laughs> right. Yes. Now good to be back with our regular gang this year. Kenny Wolf and uh, Craig Janoff heading the troops in the truck upstairs with us. Uh, Malibu Kelly Hayes, George Hill back with us. Another season at the mill. We might up. have a couple of minutes to spend with Phil Sims. And for the first time in, uh, in several years, we have Phil programming <laughs> in more ways than one. And again, Frank touched on it early. I'm sure that is not displeasing at all to Paul Tagliabu and the front office of the National Football League. Came in just about what they had hoped it would. Just a little under three hours. There is Kelly. He, of course, renegotiated during the offseason. Got himself up into the $20 million man area. Oh, well, some in the area. Yes. <laughs> so many zeros anymore, you hard to count. Saying hello to Diasi, who has been filling in for the Giants. So the inside linebacker until Gary Reason got into camp, which he did a couple of days ago. So the Giants win it by a score of 20 to 6 and the, clearly the highlight of the game tonight was uh, the first time Rodney Hampton touched the ball and uh, we have time to fill with Phil I suppose we might call this a uh, little interlude as we uh, get Phil set up with a headset. I'd like to ask him about the 72 the he shot the other day. Well the first thing I'd like to ask him about as soon as we have him uh, contact. In That's a contact. question you'll never have to ask me about <laughs> what it was like to shoot a 72. Phil, let me just ask you one thing. Your impression first off of uh, your new rookie out of the backfield, Mr. Hampton. Well, I think he made a, a great impression. <laughs> uh, I think we were all stunned when he broke that long run for the touchdown. But all during camp, you know, he's made a lot of big plays. He's caught the ball extremely well during camp. So, And we've seen his running ability and all the scrimmages we've had. And uh, we're all expecting big things from him, and he showed that tonight. Phil, how about your body? It got battered and bruised and buffeted around a year ago. Uh, how do you feel going into this season? You took a tremendous pounding a year ago. Yeah, I was a little beat up at the end of last year, but I feel good, and I'm uh, looking forward to this year. And, uh, you know, I just hope to stay healthy during the preseason so I can get the season off to a good start. Phil, I look at your offensive team, a deep line, deep backs, deep at receiver. Uh, you must spend a lot of time thinking about Mark Bavaro. Yeah, well, that's that's a good point. I think a lot of people in the organization are thinking about Mark Bavaro, and, uh, if he can come back and be the uh, the Mark Bavaro of 86 or whatever, we would I think it would just make us a great offensive team. And uh, you're right, we are deep at offensive line, receiver, and of course at running back we're extremely deep. And uh, but Mark would really round it off and, and and make it a make us a great offense. Phil, thanks a lot. We'll see you down the line on Monday Night Football. Phil Sims joining us after the Giants win it in Buffalo by a score of 20 to six. Talk to you from Denver next Monday. Saturday on ABC Sports, the world's top male tennis stars compete in the Volvo International. And on ABC's Wide World of Sports, two middleweights collide when Nigel Benn battles former champ Iran Barkley, plus the Traverse Stakes. Now, except on the West Coast, stay tuned for your late local news and nightline over most of these ABC stations. ABC's Monday Night Football preseason special has been brought to you by Nissan, built for the human race by Kellogg's, the best to you each morning. And by the U.S. Army, learn how to get an edge on life. Be all you can be. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television. A promotional fee has been paid to ABC by United Airlines, rededicated to giving you the service you deserve. Come fly the friendly skies. America's watching ABC. 
Coming up next on Eyewitness News Nightcast, suspected arson on Youngstown's south side. An old towing business is gone. And the people from a north side group home are gone. Where are they tonight? I'm Denise Robinson in Salem. A major dispute over bonds divides the city council. I'm Stan Boney. The rain has stopped. The skies are clear and get set for a few really nice days. I'll have first weather at 5 after. Mr. Sports checks on the Indians' win streak and the Reds and Giants end a crucial series. And it's all next on Nightcast. Great news from Pizza Hut. My little girl made dinner for Dad. What is it? Now, Pizza Hut delivers. Snookums, it's not my turn to cook tonight. Well, it's not mine. Yes, too. It's Don't not. Don't worry. Now, Pizza Hut delivers. So any reason's a great reason to call Pizza Hut. It said cook at 300 degrees for 30 minutes, so I figured 600 degrees for 15. Pizza Hut, make it great. Pizza Hut delivers. Call now. When the Rutledge family needs auto, home, life, or health insurance, they see me. I'm their State Farm agent, Billy King. They keep seeing me as I help them keep their coverages up to date with our State Farm family insurance checkups. When they have a claim, they see me. And thanks to our checkups, the protection has been there. If you want to see a family insurance agent working for you, see a State Farm agent. And like a good neighbor, stands for you. Sit Bream on using the glove. Make sure the glove fits tightly. Then, with a firm grip, slowly remove the hot pan from the oven. Fill the pan with something delicious from Giant Eagle. Absolute minimum pricing. <sighs> Tough to handle the hot ones. Every summer, millions of men trade their work clothes for aprons. Men who seldom set foot in the kitchen become grilling gourmets. Thanks to Butcher's Premium Brown Silver Label from Giant Eagle. So good, burgers turn out great no matter who makes them. This is WYTV, Channel 33, Youngstown, Ohio. From the Valley's News Station, 33 Eyewitness News. Len Rowe. Stacia Ertis. Stan Boney, First Weather. And Bob Hannon with Big Board Sports. This is Night.